the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Lord, we thank you, we trust you, we believe you. Tonight, we ask that you will help us. Make sure you are praying. We have come to access wisdom. We have come to access light. We cry for light. We cry for illumination. Grant us that which will empower us. Shabratus calabrianda gatus calabrishka. Ezebriatus calabrandos eslebrandos. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray one prayer before we sit. I'd like you to cry and say, Father, open the eyes of my understanding. Can you pray that prayer from the depth of your heart? Lord, open the eyes of my understanding. Give me access to light, access to illumination, access to light. Access to light, access to illumination. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My faith reaches out to you, and I believe your word for me. Sing it and I believe. I believe. Spirit, we hand over this teaching session. We pray that you prevail over our minds, prevail over our spirits until there is conformity. Prevail over us until we become that which is expected according to the heart and the desire of the Father. We submit ourselves to your word and we ask that you teach us tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. It's good to be back home, good to have everybody around. Please greet one another and be seated. Greet one another and please be seated. Thank you, worship team. God bless you. We have a lot to do tonight. We're starting a new series and um, I want us to do the best we can to redeem the time. Amen. I'm excited every time I have the opportunity to come before us and teach because I have learned through experience that one of the ways to bless people is to enlighten them. Hallelujah. You can give people money, you can give people privileges, but one of the ways you bless people is to enlighten them unfortunately we live in a generation that frowns at enlightenment because enlightenment is intangible and we have been trained by our 
environments to be carnal we always want something we can hold and relate with here and now such as money clothes cars and all of this very very mundane things but the informations that are intangible that empower us usually we do not have the patience to submit uh, i was having a conversation with one of the protocol people while i was on my way coming and i was driving and i looked at him he was sitting at the other side and i was wondering why i was looking at him while i was driving at the same time and i told him i said look my friend you will never succeed in life if you are not mentored and trained and he looked at me i said listen carefully to what i'm about to teach when we come and i was giving him instances I have learned and I am more convinced than ever before that training and mentorship is how successful people are made. It's not one of the ways. It's the only way. There are no options. Any other person giving you an option is a sign that he doesn't know what he's saying. Their mentorship and training is the only way people can become sustainably successful. Truthfully speaking, Mentorship is not listening to a man speak to you. Listen carefully. That's attendance. Mentorship is not opening up your ears to a man's teachings and having the teachings in your, your archives, your laptops, your systems. It may be a pathway, but mentorship starts with a decision that I am willing to submit myself to be taught and I will insist till I understand. Praise God. Mentorship does not start with the availability of information. It starts with a determination from the heart of the one who will be the recipient. It's a manifestation of humility to admit that there are dimensions that we do not yet see and know and have. Regardless of what our achievements are, when we come before God and we come before people he has anointed to teach, to train, to build, it is important that you assume the position of a student immediately and listen carefully and not just take notes, but write it in the tablets of your heart and then obtain grace. That's why we pray after every message. Why? We are obtaining grace to walk in the reality of what we have heard. The Bible says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. It's one thing to know, but it's another thing to have the grace to do. Brothers and sisters, listen. I may not boast, it will be arrogant to boast of knowing everything. Nobody knows everything. It will be arrogant to make a boast to claim to have arrived but one thing i can tell you is if you submit yourselves to these teachings wholeheartedly under god you will never fail regardless it's, it's not a prayer it's the resultant effect trust me on this the ideas that we communicate to you in this house are not necessarily my ideas alone they have been age-long ideas that have been used by men and women who changed the course of history. They have been age-long ideas that our fathers have used to do mighty things for God. And now God has granted us the privilege to access these ideas. So I don't want you, whilst you are listening to these things, to have a cynical heart debating whether or not you think is worthy of acceptance. Uh, personally, I've made a commitment to believe and work with them. So whether or not you do not believe it, it does not affect my outcome. Because you see, success is not corporate. Everybody will have to obey himself into the promised land. I can help you, but I can't force you there. I came tonight with a very strong burden and I was very excited when the Lord put this in my heart. It had been something that I planned to share, but um, I mean, it was, it was so powerful when the Lord put it in my heart, I really want you to succeed. God sees my heart and um, the leaders know how much we are passionately committed about the success of everyone. I believe and have held this conviction for years 
and I have taught many, including our students in the School of Ministry, that loyalty, loyalty, loyalty is a debt that you must pay. When people are loyal to you, it's as though you owe them something. When people are loyal to your anointing, loyal to your words, loyal to your grace, loyal to the dealings of God upon your life, you must reciprocate that loyalty by ensuring that their trust is not disappointed. That's why we pray. That's why we fast. That's why we prepare. That's why we research. That's why we study to make sure that every information that you receive is not only spiritual, but life applicable and indomitable. Having a character that can suppress whatever limitations. Hallelujah. So pray one more time and say, Lord, I submit myself afresh. Please pray from your heart. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Hallelujah. Success system. Part one Success Systems. Part one Success Systems. Part one The goal of this series is twofold. Number one, to reveal to us the requirements, the requirements that must be satisfied for you to experience lasting kingdom success. Number two, to unveil to you the laws, the principles, the secrets, the mysteries that are responsible for commanding success from God's standpoint. It's an attempt to help our lives bear fruit. It's an attempt to make and help contribute to making our lives meaningful. It's an attempt to improving the quality of our lives and to help us um, in our quest to become effective spiritual people effective kingdom ambassadors it's an attempt to create balance to every area of our lives so that we are not unfruitful in any aspect so this is a very powerful series we're starting off with part one and um I pray that God will help us. Two scriptures very quickly and then we'll take the course content. Second, Second Peter chapter 1 verse 8. Please media, you need to work with us very, very fast tonight. Media, help us. Second Peter 1 verse 8. And then we'll look at Genesis 39 verse 2 to 6. It says, For if these things be in you, what things? certain informations certain traits for if these things be in you and abound are lavish it says they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in this context it says in the knowledge of the lord jesus christ but it applies to every area of life if these things abound in you and they are lavish they will produce an effect the effect is that they can stop barrenness and unfruitfulness from your life it didn't say if these things be around you if these things be in you if you believe them and buy them then it says you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful genesis 39 4 verses 2 to 6 Genesis 39 and the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master the Egyptian we're reading to verse 6 
and his master saw that the lord was with him and that the lord did what made all that he did to prosper in his hand and joseph found favor or grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put in his hands verse 5 and it came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the lord blessed the egyptian's house for joseph's sake and the blessing of the lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field the last verse and he left all that he had in joseph's hand everybody say trust and he knew not what and he knew not what he had save the bread which he did eat and joseph was a goodly person and well favored help us tonight in the name of jesus christ write down the things we are going to be considering in this series please write those online follow us or at least you'll be patient to allow the media lead you there are a few things that we are going to be looking at and wherever we can stop tonight we'll stop and pray but please i want to take my time and teach you this i want you to understand it and i trust that god will take advantage of this series to bless and lift us in jesus name the first thing we'll be considering tonight is the reality of failure how real is failure is it a mirage or is it real number two we're going to look at the concept of success in the kingdom number two we're going to look at the concept of success in the kingdom what is god's idea of a successful person the concept of success in the kingdom number three we're going to look at the concept of laws and principles the concept of laws and principles can i continue number four definition of terminologies there's too much confusion so we need to clarify terminologies as it regards or as it relates to kingdom success definition of terminologies and then number four number five thank you the laws of success the laws of success we're going to be examining the laws and then number six will end with a very strong impartation and trust god to carry something that will activate these dimensions in our lives praise the lord if you believe it say amen yeah. now statistically speaking statistically speaking five out of every hundred people ever become successful in their lifetime five percent out of every hundred people that you see only about five percent of them ever become successful whether from a human standpoint in fact when you say from a divine standpoint the statistic reduces again very few people a young man gets up living his life bubbling with joy hoping he will be successful and you see the the excitement of life on his face but that same young man give him 70 80 years down the line is a testimony of pain a testimony of regrets a testimony of sadness lost opportunities mishandled laws a life of fatal failure most people die in pain most people die advising their children don't be like me most people die apologizing to their generation because they finally are forced to swallow the bitter pill and admit they did not make it pastors business people parents young people the same challenge is eating up our society the correct definition of success and a life that will become a template and a model enough worthy of emulation 
as far as kingdom success is concerned so it's, it's a big issue it's a tragedy that about five percent can you imagine that out of every hundred people whether they are church goers fasting giants prayer warriors five percent of them eventually will become successful whether in ministry whether in business in fact um it, it is said that over 70 to 80 percent of churches that start up end by the end of that year they can't continue no members no resources no wisdom spiritual forces that they've not been able to surmount and other auxiliary factors that add to enforce the failures of people write this down failure is real failure is real second point failure will happen to you if you allow it i think it's a revelation many of us need to come to terms with we have this inheritance mindset that by default just because you have a nice name or you think you are too kind to fail there's no such reality in the school of success let me tell you everybody is a potential candidate for failure until you exempt yourself is a reality that is upon us by default <laughs> a lot of spiritual people will say i reject it you better listen quietly to what i'm saying i am a very spiritual person i have learned the foolishness the foolishness of exaggerating truth beyond the jurisdiction of their relevance is what causes failure as a side effect please listen carefully i love you too much to deceive you I love you too much to mislead you and one of the graces god has given us in this ministry is capacity for balance so anything you hear that you do not understand just be patient by god's grace i'm a good builder every house is built by some man he says but god is the builder of all and so we will not build a house that is lopsided we'll build a house that stands solid on the rock no matter what shakes it it remains there say amen failure is real brothers and sisters there are pastors who are failures regardless of their spirituality there are churches that are failing and have failed some of us here seated right now it's an uncomfortable truth but right now if you will admit you know you are failing woefully for many of us are we together now yes disappointed expectations and it's important that we find out God's system to bail ourselves out and do so very, very fast. So failure is real. Failure is very real. We see it every day. You see failure in the face of angry people who walk upon our streets. You see failure in the face of failed marriages. A man and a woman who love themselves and have an agreement to live happily and right now you see someone age 24 and he tells you i have divorced how long did you marry six months one year how about failed businesses how about failed career pathways how about failed ministries how about disappointed expectations i should enter a particular dimension of the anointing by now and after donkey years, you are still there wallowing around in mediocrity. Failure is real. It lives among us. We see it in the faces of our dear loved ones. We see it in the frustration of our parents. You watch them and you know they are frustrated. Some of them are too arrogant to admit it. So they act as though they are still in control. But many have been forced, painfully so, to admit that there is something they are missing many people have been forced amplified by the recession to swallow their pride and admit i'm not getting something right nobody becomes a success by accident nobody becomes a success by chance by luck Yesterday, I was ministering at a crusade and 
I gave an instance. I think I've, I've given that instance here. And I want to repeat that example. Watch this. If I make a mistake and forget that there is a step down and then I sleep and I march, will gravity forgive me and say, no, I know you were joking. You were not serious. Next time be serious. No. Gravity does not have in its configuration the assumption that men make mistake every time i violate that law of gravity i pay for it and i do so immediately and sometimes i may not have a second chance again this is how success is and this is how failure is listen many well-intentioned people many christians born again and filled with the holy spirit have indoctrinated themselves into believing that just because of that status their life should succeed automatically no being a christian gives you the potential and the access for success there is a difference between access and delivery access means potentials delivery means experience listen very carefully all that jesus christ did for us on the cross gives us access but there are systems built in the dealings of god with men that converts access to delivery where you are now a a manifesto of those realities one of my very great mentors dr mike mudok he's taught the body of christ for a very long time that there are two dimensions to the dealings of god with man there are two dimensions to the approach of spiritual things number one he calls it the person of jesus and number two he calls it the principles of jesus number one he calls it the life of god number two he calls it the laws of god everybody say the life of god say the person of jesus say the principles of jesus and mike mudok teaches that the person of jesus is what gives you that encounter that creates your peace and secures your eternal destiny with god but it's not necessarily the key for your victory here and now are we together now so i can be born again filled with the holy spirit if i die i'm going to heaven if jesus comes i'm going to heaven i can live a life of peace whether in plenty or lack because his person has consumed me i have conformed to the image of the christ experientially but then the dimension that is responsible for my success and victory on earth is not just the person of jesus but the principles of jesus everybody say the principles of jesus that means i can be born again filled with the holy spirit and yet be sick born again filled with the holy spirit and yet be poor born again filled with the holy spirit and yet fail in career born again filled with the holy spirit and become a total failure in life such a possibility exists now most christians have embraced the life of god but we have ignored his principles are we together now and most unbelievers have ignored the life of god but embraced his principles so most of them are going to hell because they have openly declared that jesus is not lord over their lives but they have lived their entire lives applying the kingdom applying the principles of the kingdom and i've taught you here in koinonia that there is a dimension of god's power that is programmed into his laws so that whoever obeys them will get the result regardless of whether he has a relationship with god or not there is a dimension of the power and the ability of god that is programmed in laws so it doesn't matter who applies them there are certain dimensions that are privy to only believers it is only in christ that those dimensions can be obtained like peace like the joy in the holy ghost are we together now like the life of jesus security of your eternal destiny the ability to count it all joy when you face diverse temptations all of these attributes are not possible to the man who has not embraced christ but the principles of the kingdom the aspect that we have largely ignored i've shared with us on my my idea and i believe that that's god's idea of spiritual growth 
that there are two indices to measure a man's spiritual growth number one is the degree of your conformity to the image and the person of christ you're rising in character you are confirming experientially to the image of the christ but the second dimension the second index is your comprehension of the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom both are required together to say you are growing spiritually if all that is happening to you is conformity to the image of christ that is a lopsided and a biased growth if all that is happening to you is just access to the principles of the kingdom and you never encounter the person and the life you will be carnal and you will never become a spiritual man so the synergy between these two dimensions is what produce spiritual men who are relevant both in time and eternity if that is you say amen are we together so failure is very real i think it was a wise man i don't know who exactly who said doing the same thing consistently and expecting a different result is one of the definitions of insanity doing the same thing and hoping and wishing that that same thing you are doing will just change results by itself he said it's one of the definition of insanity in other words if your outcome is not consistent with your desire then you have to check what you believe and what you are doing are we together now everyone say failure is real and it's not my portion write this down the word success let's define it let's look at the concept of success in the kingdom lord give us understanding give us passion to learn please give us isaiah 117 a scripture just came into my spirit and i want you to see it isaiah chapter 1 verse 17 write this word down success what is the definition of success i'm i'm trying to introduce the concept of success because please look up the body of christ has had issues for a very long time there are many denominations and there are many christians some of them looking at me right now many listening to me online every time you mention the word success especially in church and to a christian there is this build up of resentment we have associated success with carnality we have taught and indoctrinated ourselves into believing that there are two groups of people in the body of christ those who are carnal they don't love god and want to be successful and those who are total failures now for the sake of their spiritual growth there's no such doctrine in the bible the bible says looking up to jesus not up to a denomination not up to a pastor it's important to follow us but be sure we are following christ and if at any point you are not following christ it is within your power to switch paul said follow me as i follow christ i have shared with us again the danger of creating doctrines out of personalized dealings that a man can have a particular bias which may be a product of his cultural limitation let me tell you something many of these doctrines that were shipped into the church and, and you know i love the body of christ and i don't say it with any particular sense of cynicism i'm teaching the body and so we must realize that most of these things that have become stumbling blocks listen carefully many of us have inherited this from our parents many of our, our loved ones so spiritual and well-meaning but this this um mindset especially for all of us who are around the middle belt and the northern area because of the evangelical nature of christianity and the way we received it we have been taught that any attention that is paid to your comfort and giving your life some sense of meaning here and now is useless so in an attempt to emphasize the fact that we need to live with eternity in view we have created a system of mediocrity and camped around it so there are many lazy men who have used evangelical christianity as an excuse to keep them lazy keep 
their wives and their children in poverty and penury and suffering there are men today who have not have not been working for over 20 years and it, it doesn't matter one room with your children they were born and bred there and he said the most important thing is this world is not our home one day we are going somewhere it's an expression of carelessness so there are many doctrines that have endorsed laziness and thus irresponsibility and thus lack of productivity so the average believer has been unable to rise to a position of kingdom influence where we can legislate on behalf of the kingdom it's a tragic situation please give us the scripture again he said read the first four words if you are a christian one to read again the word do well is the word succeed. So change it and use it well. One to go. Again. He didn't say be successful. He says learn. You must be taught. He says learn to do well. It's not just saying make it. Uh -uh. Learn. Be studious. Submit yourself. Under the atmosphere and the information that will cause you to do well. When I saw that scripture, it was quite instructive. Learn to succeed. Joshua Selman, learn. It is not in you by default. Learn. The same way. Um, where is he? Doctor. It's not a doctor by default. But you learn to become a doctor. You learn to become an architect. Are we together? You learn to become a mother. That's why when ladies give birth for the first time, their mothers or any of their guardians come around right and help them they can read books and google and search but it's one thing to have that theory and then all of a sudden the mother comes and says okay i will help you and then helps her and she becomes strong and then tomorrow she will help her own children learn say i will learn and i will succeed say i will learn i will be trained and I will succeed. Look at this. When you want to become a doctor, what do you do? You pass through the medical school. Correct? When you want to become an engineer, what do you do? You pass through the engineering school. When you want to become an architect, what do you do? You pass through the system. So when you want to become a success, what do you do? Unfortunately, there is no official institution for making people successful. You see why many people are failures? There are many graduates because there are many universities. There are many primary school certificate holders because there are many primary school. There are many prisoners because there are many prisons and there are many opportunities for crime. But there are few successful people because there are few successful mentors and there are few successful platforms that can help men become successful learn to do well write this down success is the accomplishment of a worthy goal write it down the word success has nothing to do with money it has nothing to do with all of these things success is the accomplishment of a worthy goal any goal that is ideal that is worthwhile when you set goals and achieve them you are said to be successful this is the general definition of success the accomplishment of a worthy goal a worthy ideal i want to become a doctor and then you pass through the system and you become a doctor with respect to that goal you are successful i want to become a joyful mother and you walk towards it and then eventually you get married and have your children with respect to that goal you are successful so without goals there is no basis for being successful are we together now the accomplishment of a worthy goal a worthy ideal is what we call success now let me give you a kingdom definition of success i've given you a general definition let's look at a kingdom definition write this down the fulfillment of your God-given assignment is called success from God's standpoint. The fulfillment 
of your God-given assignment. Not just any goal. If an armed robber says, I must steal, and then he steals successfully, from an earthly standpoint, we say he has succeeded. From, but from the kingdom standpoint, it's not a success. The fulfillment of your divine assignment, the fulfillment of your God-given assignment, is called success another definition the effective use this is my own definition now the effective use of your life your gifts and your resources to draw men to Jesus and bless humanity is called success I'll take it again the effective use of your life comma your gifts comma your resources to draw men to jesus and then to be a blessing to humanity is my definition of success so when you use your life like a drink offering when you use your gifts and when you use your resources to draw men to jesus and then an opportunity to be a blessing to humanity by God's standpoint and by man's standpoint, you are a success. Are we together now? The effective use of your life. The effective use of your gifts. The effective use of your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to bless humanity. To advance the purposes of the kingdom and to be a blessing to humanity. That's success are you blessed now very important I, I need all of us to have this understanding so that when we talk about success we are not talking of some money mongering greedy lifestyle because this is another side of the pendulum there are many people who are so carnal so fleshly the entire circumference of their christian experience is just money and houses and cars everything about their understanding of god is the one who gives my job is to just take take and be rich take and buy suit buy designers right move around the world in private jets and then we coin that and say this is my life it is a very misguided and not only misguided destructive idea about success that's what puts people under pressure to try to acquire things because we hope that by acquiring things will prove a point to people now the truth is if you are successful it will show around you but the acquisition of things is not equivalent to success in the kingdom that you are wearing a suit of a thousand or two thousand dollars you are wearing shoes you are having estates all around and you're a great man moving around and people bow down to you and people call you all kinds of names and you have multiplied troubles multiplied psychophants that does not make you a success how much you use your life how much you use your gifts how much you use your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to live a life of impact blessing your world blessing your humanity every other thing cars houses all these auxiliary benefits are just effects of success not the proof of success the proof you have succeeded is the joy in the heart of the father the proof you have succeeded is a life transformed not a car in your garage the proof that you have succeeded is somebody coming to know jesus because you did business well somebody coming to know jesus because you read your book well somebody coming to know jesus because of your marriage somebody coming to love jesus because of your ministry when your life has the capacity to draw men regardless of what area you are functioning to jesus and then an opportunity to make a mark to transform their lives you are successful by this definition you will agree with me that there are very few people who are successful there are many rich people but they are not successful there are many educated people but they are not successful haven't seen this definition why then 
are many people failures what is the reason is it that there is no access to knowledge is it that satan is so powerful and can veto everything jesus died for is it that uh, though if the few who are successful were just designed by god to be successful why do we have a whole generation as failures a whole community as failures i will tell you why because of one word just one word is called dishonor i'm going to be teaching you a lot of things we're still going to come to this issue of honor there is one reason why any one of you here will be a failure in life only one reason it's not that you didn't go to school it's not that you graduated with a third class no that's a silly excuse it's not that you are a northern man and they are victimizing you down south or you are a southern man and they are victimizing you down north or you are an eastern man and they are victimizing you those are very flimsy excuses they are obvious answers but not correct answers are we together there is only one reason why men fail in life dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles there's only one reason why people fail and there's only one reason why they will remain failures dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles is god helping us write this down laws and principles laws and principles l a w s and then principles i want us to examine the concept of laws and principles jesus thank you look at me in any other and every other aspect of our lives we believe in laws and principles but when it comes to our spiritual lives and our destinies we do not believe that they walk by principles it's a tragedy it's a tragedy please hear me brothers and sisters it's a tragedy when you go to school you know that there are laws and principles you are a science-based student they teach you all kinds of science things physics chemistry they teach you how to do a lot of things they teach you what to do they teach you laws different kinds of laws and the more you master those laws the more you keep advancing and then eventually when you have gained certain dimensions of mastery they award certain certificates to you but when it comes to destiny we have been indoctrinated into believing that we are just believers and whether we respect laws or not we will become successful i will tell you where our resentment for laws came from the imbalance and the inaccurate teaching of the concept of law and works this is where we got our resentment for the word laws great men and women of god scattered across the face of the earth in an attempt and i believe everything that they teach in an attempt to explain or to bring the body of christ into the reality of christ's finished work listen carefully in an attempt to show how that the old is gone the old testament you know and that we are products of this new testament now in an attempt to help believers live the victorious life we have from one person copying another without finding out what exactly is being said we have drifted to another side of the pendulum and so the average believer especially the average pentecostal charismatic believer when you hear the word laws when you hear the word principles you just reject it you don't even need to know law of what you just say no 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 i'm not under the law write this down laws are systems is a system of rules that guarantee a predictable outcome a law is a system of rules or just a system of operation either a system of rules or a system of operation that guarantees a predictable outcome so laws are systems of operations they are systems of rules that if and when diligently applied guarantee predictable
predictable outcomes write this down laws are a reflection of God's justice system laws are a reflection of God's justice system the Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations it didn't say where it never changed righteousness and justice are still the foundations of his throne laws are a reflection of God's justice system so that nobody will say God victimized others and did certain things no he leaves it into your hands to define whether or not you will succeed or fail write this down laws are the keys to consistency and predictability laws are the keys please pay attention especially those following online wherever you are i want you to please pay attention take notes if you can't follow us on facebook and, and we're tweeting and then we're we're making posts please follow i have a passion to help you understand this laws are the keys to consistency and predictability write this down when your results do not change regardless of obstacles then you are operating by laws when your results your outcomes do not change regardless of the prevailing obstacles is a sign that you are engaging laws hallelujah so you see a ministry celebrating 36 years a ministry celebrating 40 years people like kenneth copeland benny hin 40 something years in ministry brothers and sisters that ministry was built by laws it was not just built by emotions many great corporations across the world i don't know what the oldest um retail outfit is in nigeria the oldest restaurant in nigeria but we have very great um restaurants across the nation of the earth right like Colonel Sanders and his Kentucky Fried Chicken and a number of people, Walmart and all of this. Some of those outfits are hundreds of years old. The founders have long been dead, but the laws kept it. Write this down. Laws make your results outlive you. Laws and principles make your results outlive you. laws and principles make your results outlive you write this down finally and then i'll begin to teach correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success correct understanding not just application correct understanding and application of laws and principles are the keys to outstanding success everybody look at this mike is playing something do you know that the same way he's playing this if someone in ghana if someone in america plays based on whatever sequence is playing they will get the same result because they are based on laws is that true please help me with this this is nestle water how many of you know there's nestle water in lagos how many of you know there's nestle water in ibadan how many of you know there's nestle water in maiduguri the taste is almost the same if not the same the packaging and everything when you look at this one and leave and go to a shop somewhere and you look at it you would think they took the one here there there is consistency in results there is sustainability there is predictability there are many workers those who package this in lagos may not be those who package it in another geopolitical zone but they are all governed by the same laws so their results are the same correct thank you um pastor femi please come my friend please come two of you please stand here now look how smart they are both looking stand here please now look at this pastor femi has a knotted tie and 
this gentleman here has a knotted tie now watch this were you in the same room when you were not in your ties did you meet yourselves did you know you were going to knot ties but you took this rope did something to it and it became this and you see how much it looks like the same thing both of them were miles apart but engaging the same principle and regardless of their location the results were the same are we together now now this guy will not say lie i'm not going to not because i'm not in koinonia no if a thief not this tie to dress smart and go and steal the tie will not say you are a thief in two hours you are about to steal i won't agree no laws laws if a wicked man plants maize and a tongue-talking born-again agriculturist plants maize both lands will produce and in fact this guy may even have a bumper harvest correct laws create similarity of results so if i want to teach someone else how to be a smart gentleman like this nothing ties i don't need to tell him come and live with me forever i just need to show him how to convert a rope a nylon rope or a cotton rope are we together now to become such a beautiful object that you can put on your neck thank you sirs so it's not just where you are it's not just your background there is something you do not know you've heard me say it many times something i do not know is responsible for my limitation in life how true how true the correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success we had a great time over at bida um, we rounded off the meeting yesterday and i'm sure some of them are following it was such a great time as god always does in the meetings and i had a little session with the leaders and many of them kept asking me questions man of god what is the secret to your anointing and i in my mind i thought i said if i tell these people now they will not believe it you see that as i'm speaking to you right now somebody in another meeting unconnected to koinonia is still experiencing wisdom and the power of god at the same time you look at a graduate from unn you look at a graduate from abu you look at a graduate from unilag bring all of them together haven't never met themselves but they were submitted to the same laws they will talk as though they know they've known themselves for years correct that means there is something all of us can know that regardless of where you are all of us will call and they'll say are you experiencing the same result you say exactly as said do you believe that honestly if you don't believe this just go home because it will be that you are wasting your time this night the, the goal of this teaching is to create predictability to your success Exos is is success important somebody may be asking me be patient and ask me five years from now remain the way you are and keep going I will be glad to answer you five years from now when you watch what happened to those who are five years ahead of you now when you watch the pain when you watch three children stand before you and say daddy we are hungry when you watch your child become an arm robber simply because of failure then you will ask that question again is success important it's a terrible thing please be careful how you listen to people don't criticize men of god don't criticize leaders even business experts be careful right now we have all kinds of business experts anyone just chokes himself with tie holding all kinds of hilarious seminars everywhere and teaching all kinds of garbages and nonsense and in the end of it you are so motivated because of the rhetorics and the gimmicks that are used and then at the end of it you find out that your life is just an emotional roller coaster and you get back into square one be careful i 
I desire to succeed with my life. I have tasted a bit of it. It gives me joy to be able to lead a flourishing ministry. I know how painful it is to suffer and struggle in ministry. I know how painful it is to come and prepare as a man of God and not have anybody to bless. Today, by the grace of God, we are reaching several nations of the world and we are only starting. I have tasted a bit of the potency of these laws and I know they work. They will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. They will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. One of, I think is I think his patients, I spot her here. She sent me a text, very, very funny text. And um, she's a student in the school of ministry. And I've been teaching them a number of things. And then she, she went to Zamfara and had an opportunity to pray for someone to be filled with the Holy Spirit. According to her, she was shaking and wondering whether it will happen. And I mean, in minutes, that person was shaking and blasting in tongues. And she called me and said, my God, look at this thing. And then she tried it on another person and it worked flawlessly. Predictability. Predictability. There are keys. Nobody is born rich. Nobody is born blessed. Are we together? He said, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. It's your you can live out like that or you can change i made a decision that i will change it's a decision that i made and i want you tonight if you have not made that decision to make a strong decision i'm taking it gradually with us because i want us to understand this let's define terminologies right we're going to define 14 words that will be playing around within this series 14 words that have been misunderstood i don't want to make the mistake of believing that when i mention a word all of us understand that this is what i'm saying write it down the first word i've already defined it success the accomplishment of a worthy goal am i boring you please write the second word i want us to define and familiarize ourselves with is failure what is failure write it down that's the second word i'll be very very fast so that we can stop somewhere and pray jesus we bless you failure is a state or condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective failure is a state or a condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective you are said to have failed when you do not meet up to a desirable objective or an intended objective the inability to meet your desired or intended objectives generally speaking is regarded as failure word number three favor what is favor and um maybe i may dwell a bit here just trying to explain a few things because our general mainstream definition of favor especially in the body of christ is very limited it does not bring out the substance especially when it has to do with favor with men generally we define favor as on merited access you know and that is right we define favor as grace that is right but let me give you three definitions of favor very quickly number one favor means help full stop favor means what help h-e-l-p help whether divine or human favor means help still defining favor what is favor god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed what is favor god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed that's favor when god comes into partnership with you when men come into partnership with you to ensure that you succeed then you are said to be a favored person god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed number three what is favor men investing their time credibility and resources to help you achieve your goals 
what is favor men investing their time men investing their credibility men investing their resources to help you achieve your goals when a man invests his time that's favor when a man endorses you puts his reputation and credibility on the line to make sure you rise that's favor when men invest their resources be it spiritual financial whatever it is to help you achieve your goals that's favor never forget these three definitions they are powerful definitions word number four grace let's define grace word number four grace i wrote something down I had to tear it out of my little note i want to read it for you one day i was inspired and i wrote it down about grace just pay attention as i listen as i read grace as understood by many is seen as unmerited access listen to me this very confusion exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition okay the very confusion and exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition a very correct and biblical definition but very limiting to define grace only as unmerited access is a correct definition it is biblical but it is very limiting and sometimes can be destructive grace this is what i define grace as no i will tell you just just listen to me i'm, I'm giving you my contemplations just listen grace is a multi-dimensional reality in the realm of the spirit and in the dealings of god with men that doesn't just refer to things unmerited but realities and provisions that are exclusively found or domiciled and accessed from god in christ in other words the definition of grace is not just limited to things unmerited but it is also anything that comes from god are we together now it is a generic expression that attempts to communicate a reality a provision a possibility of things not obtained from the earth realm but from god and only in and through christ now listen i wrote this down this definition allows for other dimensions of grace to be captured and experienced this morning the holy spirit okay this is me writing permit me i'm reading as i just wrote directly this morning the holy spirit himself gave me the best and most concise definition of grace i have ever heard and known and i'll tell you what the holy spirit told me about grace ready james 1 17 this is how the holy spirit defined grace for me james 1 17 please put it up for us very fast let's see how we can gain time james 1 17 this is the definition of grace read it one to read every good and perfect every good gift and every perfect gift that comes from above and cometh down from the father of light stop is called grace anointing is grace wisdom is grace promises achieved is grace anything that is not within the jurisdiction of the earth realm that requires coming down from heaven from the father of light and can only be available in christ and through christ is called grace let me finish this i wrote something down every good gift the word gift there please leave that scripture up let me just explain something the word gift there is the word dosis and it means the act of giving and every perfect gift is the word dorema 
which means the thing given so it talks about both the thing given and the act of giving are we together now then it says it's from above and all of that now this scripture shows that grace is not limited to gifts alone but the very act of communicating things from god to men is called grace are you getting my point now so that grace is not just a thing you collect the very act of communicating with god is called grace now i define grace for you write this down grace is the sum total grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god comma i'll take it again grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ so the anointing is an expression of grace prosperity is an expression of grace salvation an expression of grace protection all of these things are expressions of grace look at me when you define grace only as unmerited access then there is no space for obedience to be featured in grace are you hearing what i'm saying now now when you obey and get results it is true that what god is giving you is unmerited in that you cannot receive it are we together now but being unmerited does not stop the fact that there are conditions to fulfill the cheapest thing we get is salvation and even salvation requires a response you use your mouth you use your hands you use your legs you use your tears there is a participation the gift is unmerited but the act of receiving is merited are we together whosoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved whosoever does not call upon the name of the lord whosoever believes in him shall have life everlasting whosoever does not believe in him is condemned already these are the words of jesus please don't limit grace to just unmerited access uh -uh. grace is access definition number five let's hurry up works let's define works now that i've defined grace i have to define works because if i do not define works um then there will be a lot of confusion let me i also wrote something about works here listen to my contemplation about works and then we'll dictate works on the other hand should not be equated with action rather certain kinds of activities look up let me explain to you what i mean many times we have been taught the moment you hear the word works you just mean ah i'm not i don't have any works again you are joking you are joking we will work for the rest of our lives there is works works as defined in context to grace and in context to the old testament refers to certain kinds of activities that um were captured in the judaic laws and were captured in the commandments that were given to moses that men must do ceremonial activities to the end that they will be able to create a system of atonement for themselves that's what was abolished works is not the same as action action is still relevant for results do not equate works with actions the works of the law are different from works what was abolished was the works of the law i never will have to slaughter an animal again i never will have to mediate between a priest to help me reach god once and and forever christ has offered himself the veil has been torn that is true but to mean there is nothing else to do in terms of action in terms of obedience in terms of partnership in terms of participation is a joke 
the bible says we are saved by grace but that system works through faith and faith is not just believing and confessing is the summation of everything you do in obedience to fulfill the conditions that are tied to the results you desire it's called faith it's the word pistis it doesn't just mean conviction conviction first but the actions that are taken in partnership with that conviction to get a desired outcome what are works in the new testament every time we talk of works we mean one word obedience write it down works in the new testament is obedience works in the new testament is partnership please write this down every time we talk of works we are not talking about going back to the law ceremonial cleansings and all of these rituals that were captured in, in the Judaic law and then all the hilarious laws and the stringent conditions that the nation of Israel had to go through that has been abolished once and forever but obedience will always be a requirement always be a requirement partnership will always be a requirement so works equal obedience to the believer today your partnership towards making promises manifest is what i call works your partnership towards making promises manifest is what we call works we need to define this because i'm going to be playing around with these words and um it's important that all of us when you hear it you know what i'm saying number what now let's hurry up i will rush now number six excellence let's define excellence very quickly number six excellence what is excellence excellence means the highest level of quality available write it down the highest level of quality available is called excellence the highest level of quality available is called excellence another definition surpassing ordinary standards is called excellence so you are excellent to the degree to which you can produce the highest level of quality available you are excellent to the degree to which you surpass ordinary standards can i continue next word mediocrity what is mediocrity the quality of being average mediocrity is the quality of being average please participate pay attention to these words the quality of being average what does it mean to be mediocre to be common what does it mean to be mediocre to be indifferent the quality of being average the quality of being common the quality of indifference what does it mean to be mediocre ordinary like everyone else ordinary like everyone else is the attitude of mediocrity average common indifference like everyone else next definition eight am i right number eight relationships what are relationships write this down relationships are advantageous connections simple relationships are advantageous connections broadly speaking connections but with respect to what we are dealing with advantageous connections everyone say advantageous connections say it inside and outside advantageous connections write this down usually mutually beneficial usually mutually beneficial so we are talking about advantageous connections this is my definition that is usually mutually beneficial that means all the parties involved in that connectivity should benefit relationships can be both divine and human write it down relationships can be both divine and human it is possible to have a relationship with god it's possible to have a relationship with satan it's possible to have a relationship with a demon spirit it's possible to have a relationship with the holy spirit advantageous connections number nine knowledge what is knowledge thank you jesus what is knowledge the gathering or acquisition 
of information the gathering or acquisition of information or facts that's called knowledge the gathering or acquisition of information facts is called knowledge many of you are tired of writing that's the secret to your peace just keep writing what is knowledge awareness of familiarity what is knowledge awareness of familiarity that is gained through education or experience what is knowledge again awareness or familiarity that is gained through experience or through education can i continue number 10 understanding the 10th terminology we are defining understanding what is understanding comprehension comprehension in one word understanding is comprehension eleven wisdom we're almost there eleven wisdom correct application of knowledge also means accurate application of knowledge write it down wisdom is the correct application of knowledge also refers to the accurate application of knowledge when knowledge is applied accurately and correctly it's called wisdom distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us do you know what do you know what i'm imagining i'm just imagining how many of you buy me cars and houses and say apostle thank you thank you thank you no no look you will be too blessed to do it even if you don't like me you will do it you will turn back one day i'll come to your house and when others are languishing i will see you together with your children giving god praise and say today is a day off we are just worshiping and blessing his name and people will say are you in nigeria you say no i i am only here but we, we 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 sit on a throne and we manipulate things according to our order remember i used to say this thing years ago believe it oh believe it i imagine you going to your mother and your father and saying mama i know you did not make it in this life but i have a surprise cover her eyes and take her somewhere and say mama the car you did not drive this is it let the devil do anything he would do do you think your mother will be happy you are going to someone's house and you are seeing them want to tear your members close because of rent i must kill you now how much is it? 250 000. that's all right that's all right in two minutes is there god bless you not alone i pray that god will help you god will make this happen someone will step into your home and see peace between you and your children and be born again there no preaching and say this is what i've been fighting this is what I'm teaching you. If you pay attention, I don't care what tribe, I don't care what background, I don't care what is happening or not happening in your life. You listen to this, you will arise. Number 12, prosperity. Let's define prosperity. What does it mean to prosper? It means to do well. Quickly, please. Prosperity means to do well. Prosperity means to excel. Prosperity means to flourish. Prosperity means to thrive. It means to do well. It means to excel. It means to flourish. It means to thrive. That's what it means to prosper. Two more definitions and we're there. 
number 13 goals g-o-a-l-s goals what are goals clearly defined desires objectives and outcomes what are goals clearly defined desires objectives and outcomes clearly defined desires objectives and outcomes 14 the last word value v-a-l-u-e value what is the definition of value write it down point of difference what is the definition of value point of difference another definition your uniqueness another definition your skill so what is value your point of difference your uniqueness your skill write this down under value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying god is called value i repeat everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying god is called value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and is capable of glorifying god is called value take a deep breath you have tried you have been writing some of you that's a key to drive laziness you've not done this in a long time I gave you 14 definitions that have controlled the destinies of many I gave you 14 definitions that are capable of changing your life from tonight I gave you 14 definitions that will be the key between your joy or your pain listen I gave you 14 definitions that will make your church your ministry your group excel or fail I gave you 14 definitions that will tell us what you will become write this down success is predictable I don't need to see your results to know whether you will be successful success is predictable now I can look at your life now and predict with digital precision whether or not you will succeed there are people I look at their lives and I know they will fail it's a very sad truth they will be offended and they will think he's pr are you God and then you see that you really fail failure is also predictable write it down so success is predictable semicolon failure is also predictable i can look at your life brothers and sisters and i can know that you are going to be a very powerful prayer warrior you are going to be a very great word addict but i know that as far as success is concerned you may not be very successful i can look at your life and i know that you are going to be a very rich man you will buy the jets and the rolls royces but you will never be a spiritual man i can look at your life and know that you may be a happy man in terms of finances but marriage you will pay a deep price i can look at your life and know you are going to be a very good husband but a very poor and broke man i can look at your life and know that you are going to be a very intelligent graduate but you may be jobless for the rest of your life or you may barely be employed and remain at the lower levels i can look at your life and know you will never rise to a managerial position listen the spirit realm is higher than the natural realm but it's not unpredictable we look at the clouds and we can forecast with a very commendable level of accuracy that there will be rain and it happens 
a pilot tells you we are landing at five minutes past one five minutes past one on the dot the tire is touching the ground we can we can tame our environment with that degree of accuracy what makes you think you need money in your account to prove you are successful i can look at you now and know that even if one million is in your account it will run away as fast as it came you know years ago as i began to pursue the things of the spirit i stumbled across materials that taught on this i folded them with speed and threw them one side look let me press on this how foolish i was imagine that i came for koinonia now and after preaching a powerful message i now tell you all of you you are going to sow my mind is not stable I'm, i need i need you have to pay my rent i'm blessing you the bible says a and b and c everybody stand up worship team you are bringing fifty thousand. prayer band you are bringing one million <laughs> Benga. <laughs> you are not praying for nothing one million leaders you are bringing two million oh what a cost way of leadership you will never bless anybody being a nuisance that way god did not send me to be a nuisance to you he sent me to bless you yes it will never happen in this ministry where i will say please raise offering for me so that i can eat well no you know what we call escape velocity in physics where you have gone past certain things it's not pride it will never happen again till jesus comes i found my way to better days <laughs> i found my way to better days for many of you tonight you're on your way to better days let them laugh at you. You're on your way. Status is changed. No more time. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. There's no more time. for one minute and say lord i am truly changing i'm not just motivating myself for nothing there is a way that can lead a man out of misery there is a way that can lead a man out of a life of pain there is a way that can lead a man to the wealthy place there is a way that can lead a man to a life of impact, a life of dignity, a life of beauty, a life of peace, a life of glory. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Thank you. Sit down. Our time is gone. Let me teach for a few minutes and then we'll pray. Now we have had all the peripherals. Please listen, I want to teach you. You just sang that you are on your way to better days. For some of you, you were joking. For some of you, you were emotional. But for a few of you, you meant it. You know why? Let me ask all of you now in one minute. I want you to cast your mind at the worst thing you have seen happen to you and your parents. For some of you, is that you were thrown outside. For some of you, is that you had admission but there was no money to pay it for some of you is that you had to go and sleep with somebody somewhere to raise ten thousand and bring back home to eat for some of you 
is that you even found yourself in occultic groups because you wanted charm for protection or success for some of you there are men of god probably listening to me you have had to under pressure join fraternities because you are hoping that it will give you ministry connection listen if you don't do anything about your success failure will force you to do wrong things if you don't do anything about your success failure will force you to do wrong things when i look at people who say god forbid over my dead body i will never do this and that i tell them keep quiet you don't know the pressure that failure forces people pressure can make you do things you never imagined you will do i've shared with you here i think it's in koinonia years ago when i counseled a lady whose situation broke my heart and it motivated my appetite to understand in success her mother true story her mother was working with a boss and the father i think was not working and then they got to a point in their life where they were stranded and i don't know if it was whatever it is but it was a very serious issue and the woman went to the boss to plead if she could have a raise in her salary to allow her cater for the needs of the family being the chief burden bearer which is very wrong of the entire family and according to what the lady told me she said the boss looked at her own mother and said you are not a, a small girl you know what to do if you want to raise someone's mother matured lady you know what to do and the mother initially refused but when she went to meet the father the situation the pressure was overwhelming both of them agreed that the mother should want to sleep with the man now yeah, I know you are, we have we can shout in church ah, I won't do it don't talk like that because the person who did it is not an idiot when somebody sits down with the head of a goat all through the night he never planned it that's what pressure me. when the girl told me that thing do you know what happened do you know that after the man paid that woman her money the shame she had to still quit the job and leave when the lady told me i said oh god what is this we are here jumping in church saying since i was young now i am old i have never seen the righteous forsaken that is such a lie i've seen many righteous people forsaken though i've seen many of their seed beg for bread we sing it by faith and i believe it but i have seen many righteous people such as our parents such as your brother and your sister you know them they love god they have been dejected and forsaken they forsook loves and good things left them success is predictable failure is predictable you can make up your mind from today that you're going to start a journey that will lead you into a dimension of success you can make up your mind today that you are going to begin in in a way and a dimension that you have never seen to obey these laws and excel let's start with at least one or two of the laws for tonight ready the laws of success thank you jesus she brought us color ready the first law of success the law of relationships write it down the law of relationships ignore this and suffer for the rest of your life embrace this and watch your life change as though you are holding a charm everybody say the law of relationships shout it the law of write this down success is highly relationship dependent success is highly relationship dependent your success and my success in life is highly relationship dependent number two everything money can buy relationships can buy it write it down everything 
I don't care what it is. Anything at all that money can buy, relationship can pay for it. Money can buy a house, relationships can buy a house. Money can help you build a church, relationship can help you build a church. Listen, money, as you know, naira and cobalt, dollars, pounds, yen. These things are not the only means of exchange. Relationship is currency. You can use it to pay for things. Relationship is currency. You can use it to pay for things. There are many ignorant people who want to be successful, but they do not know the law of relationships. So they have to look for money to pay for everything. You ask them and they tell you, I need 5 million. I need 10 million. Whereas the relationship you have is worth billions of naira in value. And it is capable of paying for anything money can pay for. There are people who have had to pay hundreds of thousands in a seminar. And another person, relationship paid for it and he entered free. Are we together now? There are people who have had to pay for rent and others relationship has been paying their rent. There are people who have had to pay for everything in life. Listen, if you use money to buy everything in life, you are not wise. No. It is a total display of lack of wisdom to use finances to get everything in life. It has nothing to do with being rich. That's the mistake our parents made. I love our parents. Don't get me wrong. Some of you here are parents. We love you. We honor you with all our hearts. Most people think you only succeed when you start having salary. 100,000 coming. And they now say, wow, I have 100,000. Then they have a need. They ignore relationships. And something that would be cheaply paid for, they would have to look for money and pay for it I have paid for many things in my life using relationship relationship like a debit card you can use it and withdraw many other things you can use it and pay for many other things relationships today by the grace of God has given me platforms I am connected to people listen connectivity is a key to success. You must be connected. Relationships can help you access anointings. Relationships can help you access endorsements. Relationships can help you access favor. 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 The major ingredient in success is favor. But it takes relationships. We have come with open arms, oh let the ancient words. Hallelujah. There are things in my life I would have paid for financially. Let me give you an example. This great auditorium, an act of kindness and benevolence by CGC. We have never paid a single cobble for this venue. And some of you who are into real estate know if you value this and we have to pay every week for all of this. Imagine the millions of naira that relationship has made for you. Yes. Something in your life that you are hoping to change today is relationship dependent. Something, a dimension in your life you must enter now is relationship dependent. Unfortunately, for many of us, all we know is just love relationship. Husband and wife, somebody who likes a lady, a lady likes him back. That, that's only an aspect of it. Your relationship with God is a key to your success. Correct? You excel in life on the strength of your relationship with God. The healthier your relationship with God, the healthier your relationship with the Spirit of God, the greater your success.
the prodigal son please help me with the sound please the prodigal son made a big mistake he broke relationship to look for money are you seeing the mistake of the prodigal son thank you he he jeopardized the potential for relationship he had a relationship with his father and on the strength of his relationship with his father he did not pay for food he did not pay for protection but here's what he said i don't want relationship i rather want money and he ended relationship and got money what happened to the money without relationships your finances will always be finite there is only so much relationship is the secret of continual financial flow relationship is the secret it is relationship that will keep finances i'm not talking about finances necessarily but i'm just using it as a case study relationships people have blessed me today purely based on relationships not even as in the capacity as a, of, of a man of god just to bless do you know that somebody in zaria today has the heart to bless you but you do not have the connection are you hearing what i'm saying now somebody has the capacity to pay for your rent without begging and without lying somebody has the capacity to give you free land purely based on relationship during my birthday people did things for me that almost brought tears from my eyes i i usually am not into celebrating birthdays and the rest the leaders did something touching different people did things but there were certain strategic blessings and things they were done that i said god what is this what is this relationships relationship can give you access to realms where your physical qualification should not allow you enter there many of us have been trivializing relationships that's why we keep hustling the bible says the labor of the fool where yet every one of them he does not know the road to the city by the grace of god i understand the ministry of destiny helpers the ministry of destiny helpers is futile without relationship god has used me as a destiny helper to many god has used many people as destiny helpers to me hallelujah cheap victories that many of us lose cheap victories some of our parents do not know anybody and so you pay for everything and when you want to use money alone to be successful a day will come you will have all the money in your life and you'll find out that there are some things money cannot do are we together there are people you know one of the greatest this is one of the greatest lessons that i've learned from my father my father is a man who was wealthy in relationships i used to think he was just you know you know just someone who just likes people but now that i've grown i have seen the wisdom relationship paid many bills for my father relationships let me tell you something relationship is an investment the same way you invest in business is the way you invest in relationship all this something for nothing is, is a joke there are many of us we have this self-flattery they don't like me you don't call me i won't call you sit down there the day you need the person you don't call that's when you know relationships are important relationships are very serious value adding investments there are times you will call your destiny helper he will not respond there are times you will send him 100 naira credit there are times you will say sir just to appreciate you you will take out time to compose a text message as if you die there and he will just send you one word god bless you but he's working the day you now ask for help you have set a template there are people today if you ever see their text they are begging the moment the need is met they forget the relationships until the day need arises uncle it's me again no it's junior say hey, i know you are junior what is the issue say uncle you know i mean i'm in 400 level now honestly I say are you the first to be there you are matured enough to start working uncle we are we are traveling somewhere we are going so and he says don't be stupid don't you ever call my line again 
most of you when you call your helpers this is what they tell you it's only when you have trouble that you call me anytime anybody tells you that you need to strengthen your relationship many of us have very bad relationship maintenance systems for as long i know many great people sadly some of them even great people i know they don't know how to keep relationships at all anytime you see their call one missed call two missed call they're in trouble they need a favor they need a help some of you are born again tongue talking but you are like that and you have closed doors closed doors your friend is celebrating a birthday you can never remember say i'm too busy are we together now your your whatever it is i'm too busy and Jimmy is my friend i love him and you know sometimes you see him and the wife and the two children of course um not everybody will have access to come and visit me that's the privilege of friendship nobody is born with intimacy by default you walk your way into it listen i am a busy person it is true there are many people who say apostle i've been trying to see you what what ordinance do i have to see you what covenant do i have with who to see you i've been trying to see you you are not attending to me that's a foolish statement you should ask yourself those who have unlimited access what are they doing that's the key in time past there were offices i tried to access i've shared with you my story years ago when i went to look for a loan i won't tell you the amount i went to look for a loan in a bank these people wasted my time and did all kinds of things and i found out i had brain capital but no relationship capital and i made up my mind some of us the fire is getting hotter by the day and you think the key is to get a job quickly find relationships do you know there are people who are not working but relationship is paying them salary every month until they get a job yes sir i know people like that my mother has a relationship with me forever my father has a relationship with me forever my siblings have relationships with me forever as i rise they rise it's called blessed by association listen once the easiest way to be rich is to find somebody building something great and invest quickly and help the person rise and as you rise chop i chop i'm teaching you listen there you see the body of christ people there, there are many foolish people in the body of christ you watch people when they are starting you are the first to run your mouth i don't believe in them now you have access to them there are people years ago they had access to me they would have been some of the closest people to me today enjoying every blessing but they just saw it today now do you know the door you enter kicking your leg tomorrow you will feel a form so now that god gives you the opportunity there are people who use 50 naira to secure a relationship that is worth millions today that's wise investment the day that great man was looking for water you quickly carried your 50 naira the bible gives us a parable i don't have time in the bible where a man oh listen a man was about to be sacked by a king are we together and he knew he was in trouble he had been defrauding people a tax collector now they were going to throw him away do you know what he did he quickly called the people and said how much do you owe so so amount i reduce it for you ah and the moment they sat him he went back to them i scratch your back scratch my own too now this is a system that the world uses but believers don't know this koinonia is very connected to several people you see us connected to the military we are connected to the police we are connected to medical personnel we are connected to politicians because you rise through a network of relationships you don't know which it's not just about being selfish it's the way it happens relationships everybody shout relationships some of us if our parents knew this some of them their classmates today are the ministers in charge of abc no relationship to bless them is that true do you know there are people who sit down today and calls just come they call them one oh they are ah, promise where are you I'm, I'm trusting God for what come 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 there's 
create one committee that doesn't make sense and say sit down there you are the chairman in charge of it after, when god helps you after seven months they say okay that's all right it's dissolved just because you must be blessed ask mephibosheth how he paid for royalty relationships a man who was crippled are you learning what i'm ask the disciples how they became apostles relationship even when they ran away for three days when jesus resurrected they quickly apologized lord i'm sorry i'm still on your team and they became apostles are you hearing what i'm saying many of you right here you come for koinonia all the time and you have a a resentful attitude this brother you are not you are not my class you are not wearing my shoe rather than for you to sit down and say ah this brother is always taking notes god is taking him somewhere he may have one thousand two hundred naira one shoe one whatever but what is entering his spirit is programming him for greatness some of you resent every other person who is not you you are losing you are losing big time in life just this law alone will bless you i am i am i am a benefactor of relationships by the grace of god god has connected our ministry with all kinds of people oh, there is there is nothing at this level by the grace of god there is nobody within our sphere of influence that we want to meet that we cannot meet it's impossible somebody knows somebody do you know statistically they say you are four people away from anybody you want to meet four people four people there are others who will invite a guest minister in the capacity of his office and pay one million honorarium someone else because of relationship he said no 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 whatever you know i mean we are together i pray for you from the depth of my heart that the the power of relationships will show in your life from today please sit down many times you see an old woman carrying firewood on her head firewood that is as heavy as five men she puts it on her head walking the question i ask is where are her relationships this mama is 70 years she spent 70 years on earth and you cannot build a relationship with one successful person listen if you are up to 25 years hearing me and there is no one successful person in your life you are really failing hear what i'm saying you are really failing there is nobody to run to when things go bad there are people like that you are a pastor you want to hold a convention and you are stranded financially nobody in your circle of influence has reason to say please sir cover my shame for me relationships cover your shame relationships cover your shame who is standing in for you who is helping you rise you go to an oil company holding your certificate and you knock at the gate and the gate man says yes say I, I prayed and god led me to come and submit my cv he says bring it as he collects it he throws it inside a dustbin and you go back rejoicing and keep seeing visions of yourself working in an oil company till you are past the age that they will receive you because there's no relationship another unbeliever let me tell you this and i say this sincerely this is one secret that muslims have relationships relationships you will hardly see a muslim child go somewhere that his father cannot create that's why some of course I, I i love them we love muslims and all of that and you find out that there are some of them you see them in your schools they, they are not even serious because they know that relationship has already had they had the degree before they started so this is just a ceremony for all of that to happen because relationship has created a degree somewhere there is a space that has been created since they were in 200 level waiting for them to occupy but believers don't have that wisdom i show you the life of god versus the principles of god Are we together?
there is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me there is no day i say it may god forgive me if i'm lying but it's true there is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me you cook by yourself you wash your clothes by yourself you intercede for yourself no relationship nobody seen anything about you to pray for you by yourself you are looking for favor by yourself they drive you alone you walk alone you counsel yourself you motivate Abba. say relationships say the law of relationships i made a statement years ago and i repeat it every once and again that we will all be great right and the greater part is that we will all know ourselves praise god sorry about that some of you here um will never have any helper do you know why you are anti-friendship your persona is anti-friendship you are resentful you are rude you are callous you are very very offensive in your approach turn and tell one another good evening and somebody turns and you are looking at the person you are not my class stop that oh listen he that wants friends must first show himself humble yourself in this training ground where nobody knows who is who it's only god that knows whose destiny you see me hug people here some of you see me hug our little children and you think that uh, i'm just hugging them i will continue to hug them because at their age we are not thinking like them that means most likely they will be better than us at age 12 some of us were absolutely foolish these children at age 12 pray in tongues love god join prayer department some of them i mean look at a destiny like an arrow and you are missing an opportunity to invest you now come when it's too late when the person has become a big man do you know there are people who call my phone all the time sending insults and saying apostle uh, whatever it is they call you you are claiming you don't know me i say i don't know you i don't know you i don't know you don't bully me i don't know you listen when you celebrate a great man when he's great it's too late mm. you came way too late you don't celebrate greatness when greatness manifests you celebrate greatness in the process you participate in it that's why i'm excited for you because i have the privilege of participating in your success how in the world can i fail listen with all humility there are people today by the grace of god that i have raised who will never allow me beg for bread till jesus comes even if i decide to be careless and i i stop obeying any law of lifting you have sat down on on a you know how they do what they call it uh, um, let me not talk business here all those uh, businesses that you do you sit down you bring somebody and you keep rising that's how you can sit on a chair and keep rising like that forever because you paid the price to build someone are you hearing what i'm saying now question whose destiny are you investing in today question who will remember you when he gets to the throne if you are not there when i'm in the cave don't expect to be there when i'm on the throne if you were not there when i was on the cave don't expect to be featured there are, there are many lousy people in the body of christ with an entitlement mentality you hear them say i knew you i knew where you were not in what did you do about it when i was walking my way when i was hungry did you ever give me water you were part of those grumbling and talking and now that rejected stone has become the chief cornerstone you are now seeing the man of god in glory and power and you are saying we are colleagues we are not colleagues no sir listen be careful and don't let men bully you with their complacency and their inability to invest in your relationship anybody who does not think you are worth a good relationship should not be found in your future there are people listen i'm rounding up there are some of you many people who would have lifted you look at you now and they think you are failures because
because of what is happening they gist about you sometimes you hear it sometimes they say it to your face but they don't know what it is that is happening and then when you rise you see them come with entitlement mentality you should give me a house you should give me a car and you ask them why they say because i knew you before no sir everybody who believed in me when i was nothing is impossible for them to fail in life because they took a risk by believing in someone they never saw any result and now their risk is yielding dividends so it is not wickedness when you see somebody bless somebody there are people in my life no matter how foolish and stupid they become i'm bound to them forever because they believed in me when i was nothing rejoice not over me my enemies for though i fall yet i will rise again are you hearing what i'm saying some of you in the whole of your family nobody believes in you they've told you to your face you will not amount to anything obey these laws and watch god shock every one of them to their knees apostle i want to be blessed what are you doing i just need hundred thousand to start a business who fooled you that that's all it takes to succeed you see that you have two tiers of rice in your house it can pay for a growing relationship you can cook food invite five of your friends and say look just to honor you guys i know that i don't have much now but i just love you after 10 years they will tell you remember that our rice now enter this five-star hotel let's now eat my own version of the rice and someone looks at you listen someone looks at say and say you you shouldn't be in the palace you say i paid for it since I paid for the palace when I could afford it. I show you wisdom keys that men are using to climb ladders of greatness. So you can see somebody in the future come. You see somebody in the future, no charisma, no anointing, yet favor will never stop leaving him. Everybody knows him. We are about living be that today and a man of God who also came for administration. The man of God came for administration. I was about to enter the car, let's go. And then um, the protocol stopped me and said, please, I need to attend to him. I turned to him and I said, hello, sir, I don't know you. He said, sir, you don't need to know me. I came for administration and I had you were around. I stopped. The guy was holding a seat in his hand. Say relationships. There are people who will be talking. Who should we lift here? And somebody will say, please, I have one daughter i have one son not my biological child but this child is so well well mannered very lovely person the person did not read this cost but that person has character and say send for that person quickly you see people who read something that has no business with what they are doing yet they keep rising to be directors relationships keep promoting them tonight we are going to pray i will stop here no one will continue the remaining next week there are plenty laws i will share with you the easiest way to succeed is to invest in relationships relationship is a stream of income when you are writing all your streams of income right relationships it will cost you now because under relationships you don't sell anything you give for free sometimes you need to be a fool investing in relationships some of you after this meeting you need to go and sit down and say lord who are the five most valuable people in my life and start calling them sometimes you don't even need five you just need one and say sir do you know there are people in my life who send credit all the time they don't have much it may be hundred naira. i'm not saying you should do it but i see the passion they are making to establish a relationship with me Billy Graham we talk about Billy Graham as the great evangelist do you know one of the reasons why he was great he had endorsements of every president before that happened it was said every time Billy Graham would write letters to members of parliament and the president of the United States wanting meeting with them they would throw away the letter he kept doing it and one day just one person attended to him a day will come the door will open don't think you will knock once and it will open you see the thing about relationship is that be 
because of what you are looking for sometimes it will have to sting your ego don't be embarrassed pay the price that's the price for the value you are looking for i see a number of men of god sometimes they want to see me maybe for a meeting and they come once twice and say please what is the big deal about this one please we are all equal before god and i say what an unwise person i have pursued men with anointings i have humbled myself i have stayed for weeks and months just to encounter people and the encounter was not more than two minutes because of value i have pursued uncommon mentors i have spent money i have sown seeds i still sow seeds into the lives of people to maintain relationship what have you done that you are complaining there are people just to stand after service and be patient everybody is pulling their mouth it's too late apostle i need to see you specially um, um and i say look look I, I may not have all the time and then you see them frowning Abba, let's respect value no great man needs you you are the one who needs him so you must pay the price pay the price when i meet people who have what i look for i don't go as apostle joshua selman if it means me sweeping the office you've had my testimony of when i wanted to take a trip to the u.s to go and scrub the toilets of charles and francis hunter i was not going there as colleagues i wanted to go and scrub their toilets for two weeks it pained me when they died and i didn't meet them relationships how do you travel to u.s to go and scrub toilet if can you snap yourself scrubbing toilet and put on facebook and say it is the lord's doing most people who don't understand this will say look at how this person is disgracing himself never be embarrassed to invest in quality destiny relationships there are useless relationships that are going nowhere cut them this night i release the grace on you there are people who are going nowhere and they are forcing you you come around them you don't love god you don't think you don't plan you don't do nothing and they say two weeks you've not leave them all love is a command relationship is not choose your friends it is within your power if you are not going where i'm going i love you but you have to stay we can greet in church we can greet around but you cannot be my destiny friend not having my convictions a man who has to make you change your conviction in his presence is not a destiny friend leave them who are you believing in right now that you have not seen anything in their life who are you believing right now some of these people some of them are outside they may be sitting smelly clothes they can't afford perfume torn clothes but they are receiving you can reject them because of the privilege that you have and tomorrow you did not know that that was your governor you were kicking away oh jerusalem jerusalem you did not know your time of visitation your time came and you allowed it to pass you we are going to cry to god tonight father i want to engage the law of relationships stand up please pray rise up on your feet i'd like you to thank god for this message we just started introducing it tonight lift your hands and thank god open your mouth and say god thank you you are revealing to me the keys you are revealing to me the keys You are revealing to me the keys. You are revealing to me the keys. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Come be God. Many of you don't know this gentleman. You see this guy? This guy would never fail in life. Ask me why. Because when we started, listen carefully. When he and I started, the time we used to meet in the campus and sit on his slab. And this gentleman, the same way he's holding his guitar. That's how he, he was a person who was holding the guitar and playing. And he will, everybody usually will be seated when it's time to preach. But he will have to stand with me. There's another dear lady, she was the one who would hold light for me. That's her work. She did it joyfully. Bring her touch light. Every time I was going to read a scripture, she would do it joyfully. Those two people will never, never beg for bread, not when I'm alive. 
Yes, no, 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 it's not amen. It's, it's a reality. I'm serious about it. I can mention names of people. I told you about my principal who I went to visit early this year and I looked at him. He had become an old man now. And I said, God, in my lifetime, please let me build a house for this man and buy a car for him and bless him with a seed that brings tears from his eyes before he goes to me. Hello. It's a covenant I made with myself. What did he do? He believed in me. I remember seeing me as a young boy and he looked at me and said, you are smart. He had a little keyboard and he called me to come and sit down. And I had come from a background of so much complex and pain. He made the entire school to gather in front of me and he said I should play keyboard for them. And that was the beginning of the healing process for inferiority that today nations are getting blessed from. I was not born this way. Never forget those who believed in you when you were not in. You see, let me tell you something about greatness. As you start rising, levels will change. Don't let your mind change. Because you will start seeing psychophants. People who you meet on the journey. And they are there to make it look like at your level. Should you now be relating with these ones? This woman used to sweep your house. Now you have become a big woman. You are even going to marry a millionaire. Just find 2,000 and let her go away. Please, this smelly woman, not your class. A wise person will say, if she could sweep my house when I had nothing, she deserves to sweep my palace. She even deserves a palace of her own. Relationships. Anything money can buy, relationship can buy it. You have been paying for too many things using finances. Start using relationships. Lift your voice and cry. Because God bless my love. Pray. Lift your voice and say, Lord, connect me. Connect me. Connect me. Pray. Connect me. Jato Salaka de Bregadia. Jeprakoto Salabakaria. I know our time is gone, but pray. I'm handing to you keys that will make your life remarkable. Man of God, pray for relationships. Strategic relationships. Covenant relationships. I like you to pray and say, Lord, take away the spirit of offense because offense is the killer of relationships. Hear me? Your friends will never be perfect people, just like you are not. There are many of you, you're, you're sad. You can never have a friend for two weeks and not talk about A to B and talk about B to C. It's a devilish attitude. I like you to pray and say, Lord, take that attitude out of my life. Bitterness on offense. Grace to forbear. Grace to endure the weaknesses of my destiny friends. Grace to endure the weaknesses of my valuable friends. Pray. Pastor Femi come. Many of you don't know why you see me stand with Pastor Femi. It's not just because Pastor Femi is my son in the gospel. Let me tell you. Do you know before he became a pastor, Pastor Femi used to be the one to carry equipment for washing team. This washing team you see. He was, he would carry the equipment and sit down in Rema Chapel. They would finish rehearsal. He would help to close and God was watching. God was watching. Foolish people were saying you are wasting time. Why are you human worship? And God was watching. God does not lift proud people. God lifts those who can serve with their heart and their life. Gradually, gradually, occasionally he would play bass guitar. Humble himself. 
even when he became a pastor there were times he was playing bass guitar one day i had to tell him no it's okay the person assisting him now francis francis is the friend of charles francis was in protocol look at how god is lifting people except you god is lifting people except you because pride has still kept you where you are big manism there are people who humble themselves to serve there are people in this ministry the level of grace they have they can be geos of great ministries yet you see them doing very frail activities some of them are in protocol running around he resisted the proud he gives grace to the humble you see what god has done in his life today god bless you aaron come let me give you god aaron many of you do not know that the first person who was the protocol of eli was aaron this gentleman you see standing here when we were doing crusades nothing to write home about oh in everybody everywhere just moving by faith it was Aaron who was in charge of logistics and buses I remember shouting at them and pushing them and all of these things this guy you see Aaron yet till today the way he is you still see him greet some of the leaders some of these people are young they are younger than him by far in age younger than him in experience and all of that and you see him still act and where there is an opportunity you see him serve with all his heart aaron is one person who has served me and served god with his life and i've made a vow and a covenant no matter what happens i will never watch him and his children beg for bread Thank you, Aaron. Question. A few years from now, who is going to call you? Do you know a Jimmy's wife, this lady you see, as of 2010, she was a member of protocol. Protocol, when we're doing Kingdom Well Summit. Had not married her husband yet. Protocol. Something with all her heart. Establishing quality relationships. Today, Look at their children, all copying what the parents are doing. You are allowing time to pass. God is sending strategic people to your life. You insult everybody who is not you. You are out to look for imperfections. This lady is too loud. This person is too this. It is true they have those issues. But can you ignore it and see that God is connecting you with a ladder that will wipe your tears forever? Our parents ignored it. And today they keep frowning at televisions when they see their colleagues. Pray one minute. Open my eyes to see those who are my destiny helpers. Open my eyes to see the relationship I must protect at all costs. Open my eyes, oh God. See the relationship. Not all relationships are worth keeping. Not all relationships are worth protecting. But I tell you, there are relationships that are worth keeping forever. assignment as you go back home today or tomorrow go and write the list of the five most valuable relationships in your life and begin to invest unashamedly in them five people that god has brought in your life that you know you need no matter what it is you don't have to invest in everybody there are people after 20 years is still a waste but let me tell you there are relationships you must protect at all costs some of us are penny wise and pound foolish we can destroy today or try to enjoy today we destroyed a relationship that is long lasting i have seen people i have counseled people who destroyed relationship with great people over trivial matters matters of marriage matters of money 
matters of job, matters of reputation, matters of ego. Bro, great relationships with people. I know great men today who have vowed in my presence that they will never help certain people because of their attitude. Last prayer. Father, give me the grace to be friendable. Give me the grace to be relatable. May my life not drive people away. May my words not drive people away. May my attitude not drive people away. May my sense of resentment against people not drive them away. Pray. Success system. Success system. The mysteries that have been responsible for your common life, your common needs that is in the life of many people. Hallelujah. Look up. We are rounding up now. Some of you need to call your parents tomorrow and restore your relationship. Some of you need to call your siblings and restore your relationship. Some of you need to call maybe some people in your department. Even as workers in this house. Some of you need to say, look, I'm tired of this. I can't be fighting everybody. Master the art of celebrating people. That's one of the keys of relationship. Master the art of lavishly and truly celebrating people. Ah, Marcelina, you have a lovely voice. Amaka, you have a lovely voice. Ah, empty, you are playing well. Don't just say what is special. You see, the moment you trivialize people's worth, they run away from you. That's why you never see me talk about any man of God and try to show that I am higher. No, 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 no. You hardly even see me call any of this my people, my son, my this. It's still a happiness in my spirit. Don't resent people to show you are higher. No. Celebrate people. Our children come here after service. You see me hug them and appreciate them with all my heart. You come here whether I know you or not. I'm shaking you, I'm greeting you, I'm hugging you. After service, I tell you, hug one another. Some of you just pull your mouth and you are going straight to the boss. Don't do that. Don't do that. You, are, you can add 10 years of pain to your life by ignoring one person. Father, I pray for your people tonight in the name of Jesus. You are revealing to us success systems that will bring us into uncommon dimensions of triumph. I pray, oh God, that every spirit of bitterness that is in anyone here that is responsible for driving valuable people may that spirit live your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that God will give you the unashamedness to invest in profitable relationships in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that you will have at least two to three valuable people in your life that you can call friends in me. And I declare and declare that every wrong attitude that you have portrayed that has driven great people from your life, I declare a restoration for you tonight. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. And I will forever sing your praise Your spirit opens to me The treasures of your word And I will forever sing your praise And I will sing Of the wonders of See
Holy Spirit, tonight we have come. Students learning under your wisdom. Students learning under your, your tutelage. We ask that you teach us the presence of the kingdom. Teach us the mysteries and the secrets that have made men mighty in their generation. We submit ourselves tonight, O oh God, and we pray that you will mentor us. Cause us to become extraordinary wonders in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Please greet someone and be seated. Good evening, everyone. Let's appreciate all those outside. It's raining. And um, it's a lot of sacrifice outside. Overflow. One, two, three. Thank you so much. Those following us online, we bless you. The Lord honor you. In the name of Jesus. Good evening, everybody. It's my joy to be here. Please help us sound. Let's have some quality. Praise God. It's my joy to introduce a very great man and his wife. Hallelujah. I seldom do this, but they gave us a very great visit. Hallelujah. I simply call him honorable. He's a politician, but a very anointed one. All the way from um, Adamawa State through Abuja and here. The Adamawa State House of Assembly. Hallelujah. Honorable sir. John Terry and his lovely wife. Let's honor them. Please honor them. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma. I honor you. Thank you so, so much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Success Systems Part 2. Let's get to the business of the night. Success Systems Part 2. Knowledge is very important to walking in victory and dominion. And one of the blessings of God in this ministry is the grace he has granted us to be able to unravel the mysteries of the kingdom. The secrets that um, are responsible for the strange lifting of men. He's spoken to us that this is our year of triumph and is teaching us and helping us understand the mysteries of the kingdom I've said it again that the kingdom of God is made up of systems everyone says systems there is a system with which God imparts his grace upon people there is a system with which men receive restoration there is a system with which men are lifted there is a system with which men last and are preserved and in this series God is helping us to uncover the demands that govern lasting kingdom success as well as the laws praise the Lord we started last week defining a lot of things terminologies we spoke about success we spoke about the reality of laws please get part one if you were not here we don't have all the time to go back but um, I just want to do a quick recap on the first law we began to discuss the laws and the principles I told us that laws create predictability say predictability when you operate by laws, your results become consistent regardless of what the opposing forces are. You don't approach life emotionally. You will fail. Life is too dynamic for just emotionalism. You must approach life from a standpoint of exact understanding. There are principles that produce consistent results and God is helping us to understand. The first law that we looked at last week was the law of relationships. I cannot, um, I cannot tell you how many testimonies already have come in. Strange testimonies as a result of this one understanding. The fastest way to become successful is through quality relationships. It is a law that governs success. I said last week that anything money can buy, relationships can buy it. Anything at all. Anything money can buy, relationship can pay for. For sure. The distance between you and the next level of your life is a relationship. 
who knows you matters in the school of success who you meet matters who likes you matters are we together now these are the mysteries that many well-meaning believers do not know they do not understand and so we pray in tongues we fast we are um, excited but then we fail woefully in almost every other area of life I said a few things about relationships um, that I think is important we pay attention to I said how that relationship is an investment the same way you invest in stocks the same way you invest in agriculture the same way you invest in your shop the same way you invest in education that is how you invest in relationships it will cost you are we together now relationships will cost you your ego relationships will especially from the part of the one who is the chief recipient there are many people whose arrogance will not allow them to invest in quality relationships that will build. And Jimmy used to say that one of the um, greatest things that can happen to a man is to partner with a man who is building something great. 50 naira invested in a quality relationship today can give you an estate tomorrow. What an investment. There are many foolish believers who are not part of anybody's success story. There is no future for a man who is not part of anybody's success story. Someone should be able to say you discerned the grace of God upon him and stretched a right hand of fellowship when the rest could not see it. My life is blessed today by the grace of God because I, have, I, I was able to discern people, discern potentials, discern greatness even when the, the custodians of those virtues did not know it see there are certain things you do that will pay you for life one of it is discerning greatness and investing in it through quality relationships i gave an instance of people who have been so instrumental in my life these were people who had the eyes to see when there were no physical results and today i owe them partnership to make sure they succeed regardless of what their personal failures are they are the risk they took to believe in me is a debt that I must pay for a lifetime. Who owes you gratitude because of a quality relationship? Muslims have this. They know this. They excel overnight because of the capacity to discern. Many believers have this ugly thinking that because all of us can approach God directly, we don't need men. You will always need men for as long as you are alive make reference to my teaching the gift of men you need relationships i told us relationships are advantageous connections advantageous connections there are nonsense and foolish relationships and we received grace last week to get out of it i hope that that grace worked for you during the week because there are relationships that are going nowhere complete um you have to be connected you have to be connected in ministry you have to be connected strategically in business you have to be connected we call it networking in politics you have to be connected you ask honorable here he will tell you you cannot rise no matter what God told you that is your business but as far as impact is concerned God told me I'll be great thank god he didn't tell everybody he told you you must understand the wisdom keys that will make others buy into that vision relationships will require being friendly the bible says he who wants friends must first show himself friendly this attitude of wanting people to be this you are not my class you are not my uh, what do we call it my size you are not my expectation is what is the costly mistake people have made that some are still paying for it today and they will pay forever you must have the discernment jesus understood that as powerful as his agenda was he needed men and so he was able to invest in them regardless of their failures he watched them as they stumbled they fell relationship is not about perfection relationship is about understanding you must know that perfection is not a requirement for relationship 
replace perfection with sincerity of heart are we learning now please pay attention to what i'm teaching you this is not one of the ways people become great this is the way people become great you can earn a living through relationships there are people who are not doing anything you look at them and you think they are they are occultists or they deal in drugs they have invested in the lives of too many people for them to fail they can sit down at home yet they are all thank you they thank you pays them salary every month without retirement god is giving you an opportunity today to make quality relationships that will bless you tomorrow it's a lesson i learned from my father like i told us last week my father knows somebody almost everywhere if it's an armed robber he knows a policeman somewhere who can show up when required are we together now if it's for discount for fertilizer somebody somewhere he knows someone in the ministry of agri if it's to help you bring your car from Kotono, there is somebody he knows what a wise way of living i watch relationship pay many bills for my father if you use money to pay for everything in life you are not wise did you hear what i said let me repeat myself if you use only money to pay for everything in life everything in life is bought but money is not the only currency integrity is currency relationships are currencies heavier and weightier currencies the the least valuable of all the currencies that we use to purchase things in life is finances trust me when i say this someone will not give you money but he will give you what you would have bought with the money he gave you two things access and he took away pain from your life are we together now we must trust god for grace to be able to access quality relationships one of the points that i did not mention last week that i i think that i must stress before we continue is what i teach in the school of ministry i teach our school of ministry students um, i call it the fundamental law of human relations and it's important i'm going to state it i want you to understand there is a key to attracting people to your life it is the ability to satisfy the highest psychological need of every man you must know it and the highest psychological need of any man at all including you any man is the need to feel loved the need to feel valued or valuable and the need to feel appreciated please write it down any man will die to see this happen in his life the highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved the need to feel valued the need to feel appreciated please write it down and let's talk a little about that because many believers think that just because you are born again relationships will happen overnight no people have lost contracts worth billions because they have intelligence but no relationships and in the body of Christ, we have this ugly way of saying, I don't need anybody. I'm not talking of some negative Godfatherism. Somebody must recommend you somewhere. Are we together now? Come, my dear. Come to. Now, everybody, I want you to give them a round of applause. Smile while you are doing that, two of them. I will tell you why. Just clap for them generously and truthfully keep clapping don't stop this is for two of you now keep clapping i didn't ask you to stop praise god god bless you now watch them what are they both doing or what were they both doing do you think if you ever tell them i'm a bad man they will believe you no i satisfied in one minute the highest psychological need of any man by this act they don't even know what they did but i gave them an impression of being loved i gave them an impression of being valued i gave them an impression of being appreciated brothers let me give you a big secret do this you are 50 percent gone to get a very good godly lady frown your face praying alone and i show you the way to misery 
regardless of spirituality yes time tested rock solid principles are we together the bible says laughter listen when two people are fighting the first thing that disappears is laughter not love love is still there but laughter disappears every time there is restoration it is backed up with laughter when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream and they said among the hidden the lord had turned again their captivity and all of that you know sarah laughed all who hear this will laugh with me the ability to keep men loved the ability to keep men um feel appreciated the ability to keep men valuable is the grandest key to establishing quality relationships when you say this person is likable whether consciously or subconsciously their personality or their training has brought them to a position where they present a disposition to people that make them feel loved everyone on earth is running away from where they are hated to where they are loved and that location can be a human being they can leave you and live with the money they have and live with the access they have to someone else they i'm not talking of flattery and lies by the grace of god we have a large workforce in this ministry i am i am intrigued it never ceases to amaze me the level of commitment and diligence of the workers in this ministry and this is true from my heart truly speaking you see wise people are clapping a politician is clapping because he understands the implication of this but many people that's why you are in in the school of the spirit why do you think in campaigns anybody just says anything and they clap they are not clapping because they understand what was said they know it's a key it's a key to what you will go home with it's a key to what you might lose never allow your life be the reason for someone's tears and misery at least not with your consciousness there are some of us who have an ugly disposition towards people this lady is so ugly you are just seeing the person for the first time and you're acting that way this lady is so slim this lady is so plumpy this lady is not she can't even speak english she's not my class i show you the person who will pay for everything by himself because years to come you will open the office you are trusting for help and see the the victim of your mockery seated with the biro that can change your life and say the door you came with follow it and go out on wise decisions some of our parents made those decisions and they are still paying for it till today cheap opportunities that they would have reason these are laws they will never be bent they will never change i came from a background where we were told that when you relate with people of influence it affects your spiritual life and for a very long time i worked in that foolishness until i understood the kingdom now i'm a friend of every influential person you can be in the world and not be of the world you can be in a system and not be corrupted by the system the chairman board of trustees of this ministry is a general you touch me two people punish you from the realm of the spirit and the physical realm yeah. for sure there are many well-meaning men of god who have no one to speak for them and they come and collect a land they spend 200 million naira buying the land investing to raise it to its foundation someone comes and put a big x no prayer will change it it remains there the prayer needs a man the angels roam around the earth did you apply a law that authorizes us to walk where is the human vessel we will speak to there's no one but you are a prayer warrior you see no truth in the kingdom was designed to replace another they complement are we together now you have relationships you don't pray you will suffer no spirit talks to any man nobody helps you but you can pray you can fast you are a, a student of the word but you don't have strategic connections jesus was a man who understood this principle 
when it was time for him to get into Jerusalem he said go there's somebody who has a coat if he asks you tell him the master has need of it the man did not refuse connections are we together now Jesus had relationships he had people he could send do you know what it means to send 72 people to go and return back with loyalty David was a great man ordained to be king anointed but his anointing could not help him he was in a cave called Adullam until relationships came certain men came and they vowed they said David we will make sure you are king what if they were lying to kill him the Bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor don't forget that scripture in the multitude of men not gold not silver in the multitude of men access to the hearts of men gives you true honor access to the hearts of men gives you true honor are we together now value relationships don't lose relationships to look for money that's that's not wisdom don't lose relationships to look for job look for opportunity it's better to lose a job and keep a valuable relationship because when everyone in your circle of influence is rising you will be blessed by association a message i preached in 2008 that a man can be blessed by association god called abraham alone and lot went with him how did lot get blessed not by any personal revelation as god lifted abraham he lifted him relationships how did jo joseph come out of the pit he, di uh, he, he didn't just have gift enough gift alone could not bring him out there was a relationship he established with a wine presser it was the wine presser that told the king i remember my wrongs two years ago there was a man who interpreted my dream he said go and fetch him the bible says and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon i'd like you to pray in one minute bless you darlings and say lord give me the gift of men strategic alliances valuable connections that can become keys let my life not become a padlock to many valuable relationships please pray lord let there be a man to speak for me in the days of adversity let me not fight alone hallelujah please sit down there a particular man of god was sharing his encounter with bishop Oyedepo. he used to be a pastor in living faith before he went to start his own work doing a great work for god and when he went to his father in the lord bishop Oyedepo, and said that sir what one advice will you give me he said bishop Oyedepo told him the interpret you know I'm, I'm giving the english interpretation but he told him in yoruba he said young man never fight alone you will not win did you hear what he said never fight alone nobody fights alone ask david david went alone but he didn't fight alone he said you come against me with your spares and all but i come against you in partnership to a name relationship every great man knows that his wealth is tied to relationships when you see a man mysteriously wealthy people don't say this guy has a brain they say he has gone somewhere he fraternized with someone let's hurry up work with relationships and you will be amazed at the doors they will open only four people to meeting and accessing any breakthrough you desire statistically confirmed the distance between you and your prayer request is not just a destiny helper away but statistically speaking somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that's how naman was healed a little slave girl who knew a prophet who could take him there and he received his miracle hallelujah law number two take notes if you can get the teachings and listen with all your heart law number two that is part of the success systems of god is the law of value 
another word is the law of difference you can write the law of value slash difference please write it down the law of value exodus chapter 4 verse 2 exodus chapter 4 verse 2 the law of value the law of value those outside if you're with me shout amen god bless you please make sure that the rain doesn't interrupt you i know that you are not having the best of conditions but trust me what you are hearing now will bail you and cause you to bail others praise the lord the law of value it says and the lord said unto him what is that in thy hand and he said a rod verse 2 and he said cast it on the ground and he cast it on the ground it became a serpent and moses fled before it go to verse 2 that's just verse 2 that's what i wanted and the lord said unto him what is it in your hand and he said a rod it is impossible to be sent on earth with nothing are we together what do you have in your hand that was the weapon that moses used god will always use what is in your hand he will anoint you but the anointing will flow through what is in your hand the anointing needs a physical channel to find expression and the conduit that gives it expression to bless you is what you have in your hands in second kings chapter 4 verse 2 second kings chapter 4 verse 2 a woman was dying they are about to sell her children because her prophet husband had died and could not um they gave the children as a collateral and when she came to the prophet elisha said unto her what shall i do for thee then he says tell me what do you have in your before they received breakthrough they were all asked what do you have in your hand what do you have in your house write this down the law of value states that your value which can be your skill your gift your ability is your difference and creates your rewards your value is your difference and it creates your rewards in the realm of greatness men are rewarded based on their value not based on their needs not based on their desire the idea of something for nothing is nonsense it doesn't exist value your skill your gift your ability which is also your difference now listen a, a wise man dr mike mudok a, a true apostle of wisdom said this he said your similarities decide your comfort but it is your difference that decides your rewards birds of the same birds of the same feather flock together even if they are failing they fail together but when you want to succeed truly speaking there must be your difference another word for that difference is your uniqueness it is your gift that brands you to stand out there are many people in church wallowing in so much ignorance waiting for god to step in and change their lives whereas god is asking them if you will give me the rod my duty is to anoint the rod and cause it to produce supernatural results my duty is to anoint the oil and cause it to multiply beyond your ability when it was time to feed five thousand people nothing produces a harvest of nothing and jesus said look i can't do anything go and look for bread he said feed them they said we don't have anything even a year's wages will not be able to cater for them and then andrew found a young boy with five loaves and two fish and he brought it and the bible says jesus lifted it and gave thanks god anoints your gift he does not anoint nothing you have to understand this there are many people angry at god angry at government angry at parents spouses angry with themselves not knowing that the key to any man's breakthrough has been left to him the day you decide to pay attention to the law of value 
that day you are ready to exit failure you are ready to exit suffering value your value creates your rewards and there are two dimensions to rewards there is a tangible dimension the money now the cars houses all the physical things that come and there is the intangible dimension the fulfillment that you get the satisfaction the peace that is derived write a few points down your value decides who pursues you ah. your value decides who pursues you you know what i mean by value now your gift your skill your ability whether supernatural whether natural if nobody is following you it's because you have not done anything about your value it doesn't mean you are not valuable is that you've not done anything with it because he gave on to one five he gave on to one two he gave on to one one there is nobody with zero nobody with zero your value decides who pursues you and i wrote something down here i says who pursues you decides the magnitude of your reward your reward is dependent on the kind and the quality of men that seek you for your value please learn this many of our parents are angry nobody is seeking them to expect rewards for doing nothing is fraud there are many people who sit down and just wish that things change they get angry at every rich man they get angry at every successful man and they think everyone is diabolic everyone is a crook no no your value sets you apart in the school of greatness your value sets you apart in the school of success please learn this the difference between you and any man you admire is value redefined value refined sorry i meant to say value refined enough to be identified and pursued dr mike mudok said a problem is an invitation for reward the problems around you are god inviting you to come and step to a greater level every time you pray for the throne a goliath will stand before you he who kills goliath is the one who sits on the throne you don't desire the throne without the ability to kill goliath so before he arrives you learn how to kill learn how to kill goliath the king put a price tag three things whoever is able to kill goliath number one he will be he will receive the king's daughter for a wife two he and his family will be exempted from tax three he will be given great riches and honor and david said that's a deal let me teach you a great mystery never fight any battle till you know what the reward is there are foolish battles without rewards you sweat and kill yourself and at the end you find out there's no reward never fight any battle until you know what the reward is is god helping us i teach our school of ministry students um certain things and let me let me just borrow this from one of the um i teach them this under finance until there is a problem that you can solve you are unnecessary write this and let me show you the key to what we call inferiority the key to what we call complex this bitterness and hatred we have towards great people there is nobody that was born to just be following others we decide our destinies until there is a problem that you can solve it is unnecessary if you are not sick you don't need Benny Hinn if you are not foolish you don't need mike modok are we together now if you are not sick you don't need a doctor you don't need any furniture work you don't need a carpenter as much as doctors like healing people and ministering health to people the only way they continue eating is when they are sick people oh you have a problem go and lie down while you are lying down the victim the person who brought you goes to the cashier doesn't sit down in the office you go to the cashier you pay am i right please 
yes the doctor sympathizes with you dear lord the god of heaven will help you but while that is happening you are paying the doctor his salary somewhere is that true i see many things in my life i cannot do for myself and i'm shocked how much i pay for it and i'm surprised and almost um, sad that i will continue to pay for it why do you pay someone in a restaurant you don't have the knowledge or the time to cook so the one who can do the cooking collects the money is that true yes away with this anger at people there are some of us who watch our loved ones do this resentment for people there are people who see men of god with crowds god has honored them and they are angry so 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 man of god so 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 church it's not all about the crowd do you think people are idiots a man can be stupid but a crowd cannot be stupid are you hearing what i'm saying the bible says where the carcasses are there the eagle will gather eagles are wise people don't just sit down and commit their time to hear nonsense no value discover and develop problem solving abilities write it down discover and develop problem solving abilities every one of us here will succeed to the degree to which we train and build and many times receive the ability to solve problems i am passionate the day i discovered this I made up my mind I would never harass God over my my destiny again because I knew that it was in my hands if nobody is looking for you as a music artist it's a sign that you are not solving problems or you have not made it known I will share other laws if this guy raises a song now it is because that song is ministering to people he never sleeps he never slumbers who is that he solved your problem the song didn't make meaning to you till the day you saw f the song didn't make meaning till three days to your wedding and you still needed 1.2 million all of a sudden you didn't need to hear kirk franklin you took don Moen. he never sleeps he never slumbers and all of a sudden you now found out that ah this is why this man is blessed you that you don't need it now does not mean another person does not need it what a time we live in where there is a need for everything everything good or bad there is a need of course we are believers you don't do bad things but i'm saying every good and perfect gift has a need on earth value value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life is a bailout system to get out of mediocrity get out of failure there are people like bishop td jakes uh, i was listening to one of his messages and he says there was a woman who made millions simply because of her fingers someone saw her fingers and started spotting the rings the rings of their designer the rings that they make and I mean millions. Everything God gave you is an advantage. Esther got to the throne not just because she was bright. She proved that she was bright later on. Her beauty took her to the throne. It's an advantage. Samson could kill the lion and all of that. It's an advantage. Everything in your life. Do not allow men, especially church people, to destroy your gift now you must be guided to use it especially sensitive gifts there are gifts that are very sensitive and if not guided you will lose your work with God just to get money however there is nothing God gave you that is for waste are we together now thank you your destinies are the mercy of the discovery and the development of your problem-solving abilities be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a master at providing solutions and i guarantee you, you will never be ignored at best you will be criticized by ignorant 
people and those who are intimidated by you and what you represent but not to be ignored be a master at solving something you must solve a problem don't sit down and roam around getting angry and hoping one day one day it go better that's a wise saying that has never worked for anybody the best way to predict your future is to create it don't sit down and wish and hope and wait you stand up and create it there are people who see men of god and the privilege of the blessings that he has brought the influence the prosperity and all of that and people get angry you know people just look at a man of god and say if a man of god is preaching the gospel and then you are this blessed you see if you are ignorant just keep it to yourself so that it's easy for god to help when you spread it you implicate yourself the more the bible says even a fool when he's silent is regarded wise there is no man of god who is blessed because he's preaching every man of god is blessed because he's providing supernatural solutions are you hearing what i'm saying they are spiritual in their context but they are supernatural now you see god's reward system is such that whether you sell your value or give it free for as long as there is a dispensing of value you must be rewarded that's why a preacher will not charge you for anything yet god will reward him i will never beg for bread it's not pride it's the truth because for as long as there is one sinner to be saved for as long as there is one sick body to be healed for as long as there is one mind to be transformed for as long as there is one person desire of us of an encounter i remain valuable that's why the bible says when you see darkness covering the earth rejoice your light has come it's time for you to shine the presence of darkness is proof that you are an endangered species and nobody will push you out like that say i am valuable shout it i am valuable say in the name of jesus from today i take responsibility and i create a desirable future by solving problems every job advertisement is a declaration of need by that company we need a secretary what they are trying to tell you is that we have seen a deficiency in our services we need to outsource intelligence whoever can qualify for that receives the job is that true you must be valuable let me give you a key master one thing first you see this issue of deception i am highly multi-talented which of them has brought bread to your table i'm not i don't argue that there are many arrogant people moving around saying i'm multi-talented say what can you do you say depends on what you want i can do everything growing up i found out i can sing i can do this you see people what do you do you say anything you sell water excellently i mean i mean i are you in real estate yes i am are you in this i am i make hair too i can cook you know you see a restaurant one side is carpentry one side they are selling food another side they are selling drugs and selling gin and selling all kinds of things you must be specific your value brands you it helps everybody know when to need you there is nobody you see who does only what they are known for but like the door to a house every house has what you call a master door everybody say master door it is the master door that gives you access to other doors if the master door is closed you cannot access the door to the kitchen you can't access the door to the toilet so there are other potentials but there is one that will bring you to notoriety are we together now learn this don't just tell people i can do everything I, then it means i don't need you I don't need you if i want to sing i need the worship team if our sound is bad you see us begging the technical help us if we need order we need the protocol department if we need media capture and then following with our social media platforms we need the media department any department we don't need has not been created in this ministry the day the need arises we create it just like you you roam around and there's nothing to draw men to you when jesus showed up the bible says in the book of mark one two three when you read he said all men seek for thee all men seek for thee 
they don't seek you just because they love you the world is full of people who also want to achieve their goals whoever is valuable becomes the center of attraction miles munro dr miles munro gave us a very beautiful analogy and this is how he put it he said during um now let me use it in our context nigerians when it is rainy season everybody starts looking at a mango tree happy and expectant the same mango tree you will sit under and gist for hours and argue and not even know the color and look at everything but the moment it is rainy season and the mango fruits start coming out are we together people come and they can climb trees and do everything you know i had to cut the mango tree at my place because in the night there were all kinds of things you would hear someone walking literally just climb the tree and trying to catch the ones that were trapped you know and all of that early in the morning five o'clock god is my witness you hear people running once it rains or wind shakes the place in like 10 minutes somebody's around with pocket fighting and i said no i can't continue so i took away that value from that environment and naturally the people went somewhere else listen this is how nations attract attention they come up with policies that create problems then when it creates problems you come and meet them and say i thought i told you let's negotiate and you refused now there is a problem and you need us here are the terms may you be so valuable that no price pays on you becomes too much that you are so valuable be as valuable as oil look at oil during scarcity when you want to put fuel gas you are on the queue it is your money yet you are still begging somebody helps you to pass and you say thank you sir yet you paid that's called value that you are so valuable that people bless you and call it a privilege are we together now i aspire as a person to be so valuable to the body serving the purposes of the kingdom within the the dimension of the grace and calling he has given me that no level of physical and spiritual reward it is my desire that nobody will ever bless me one day thinking he did me a favor value value somebody sowed a seed into my life one time and in two days something dramatic happened in his life and he called me say apostle i have another one i said that's it it's not that i need the seed but i said you see that nobody leaves what works human beings are not stupid when people change for from uh, they change formulas and all of that is because it's not working the day you shake hands with somebody how are you sir and he says good morning and from that day people come and queue in his shop the day you are passing say bros come now i have free your god for you because he has identified like um obededom that something was introduced to his environment that brought him an advantage the law of value i learned this law it changed my life by the privilege of god's grace this is what is helping us as a ministry the more valuable we become to the purposes of god the agenda of god and the needs of men the more we continue to rise a day will come when we will wave the flags of nations tens and hundreds of nations why because our value would have extended to those territories they will come yes they will come for as long as there is sickness in the world they will come for as long as there is oppression they will come people flow from the realm of ignorance to where there is knowledge pray one prayer as we continue lord whatever has made men ignore me whatever has made my helpers ignore me i receive grace to work on myself don't just blame the devil and keep insulting people my father didn't do this my mother didn't do this outside inside online pray make me valuable make me valuable so valuable in the area of designs make me valuable as a tailor let me not be a tailor that is when every other professional tailor rejects then they come to me as a caterer let me be so exceptional as a businessman let me be so exceptional as a student let me be so exceptional 
let my education center let my school be so exceptional that men will want to come there to identify with it let the anointing on my life be so exceptional that gentiles will run to that light and their kings to the brightness of my rising lord let me have something to give my generation i'm tired of escorting people i'm tired of competition pray i'm tired of hating people and blaming people there is something you have put within my spirit that can give me a place among the great there is a place you have put upon my spirit that can compel the loyalty of my helpers give me grace to be valuable grace to be valuable hallelujah are you learning something never forget this your reward is tied to your value your reward listen we were not designed to live off miracles a miracle is a sign that something went wrong and God is stepping supernaturally we were designed to live by principles principles a miracle is God's intervention but you cannot you can get miracle money but you don't you don't live with miracle money you live with principles you can get the act of God's mercy step into your life in a season but if you want to be great it has to be by laws are you getting blessed the Lord is leading us is helping us you may look weak now but take what I'm saying seriously and watch your life grows follow these laws and you watch your desires follow you like the animals came helplessly to the ark of Noah you may not believe me but believe the truths I'm teaching hallelujah the third law that I want to teach you connecting with the second law now wherever we can stop tonight there's a lot to cover is the law of competence and excellence the law of value talks of recognition of what you have but the law of excellence competence and excellence the fourth law that governs God's success systems please listen carefully Proverbs 22 29 please give it to us media very fast the law of competence everybody say competence say excellence one more time say competence say excellence now if you're a believer read that scripture projected let's read together one to read seest thou a man aha uh -huh, diligent in his business he shall stand before kings he shall not stand before mean men no specific person no specific person seest thou a man not the man any man any man who chooses to assume this posture of diligence that produces competence produces excellence remember we define terminologies excellence is maintaining is is the highest producing the highest quality at your level excellence producing the highest quality at your level excellence means to surpass ordinary standards i read a book years ago called the enemy an enemy called average by john mason i think that was 2005 or so and that book changed my life forever because you see many of us especially africans were born in this lifestyle of mediocrity and when we give our lives to christ sometimes if not correctly taught we think that what we have come into is a license and an excuse for mediocrity mediocrity means living in a common realm having no passion for surpassing the ordinary there is nothing mediocre that eventually becomes great it may not be bad but it will not bring you to greatness the law of competence write this down competence and excellence are magnets competence and excellence are magnets attracting people 
attracting opportunities attracting resources competence and excellence are magnets attracting people attracting opportunities attracting resources we're on our way to better days you see us sing this song we're on our way to better days it's not just a special number it's the truth we're on our way to better days have you learned to use that magnet called excellence discovering your potentials obeying the law of value is a good start but in itself will not activate success systems in your life it is value that is excellently dispensed value that is communicated with competence what is competence thoroughness predictability of results there are many anointed people who are not competent competence in anything there are business people who are not competent there are students who are not competent there are workers who are not competent your certificate gives you a job your competence promotes you your certificate gives you a job and that's where it stops it is competence that promotes you every time a company is about to be downsized who do you think are the ones that they send away the ones that the company perceives to be less valuable in terms of competence discovery is important but development qualifies you to sit with the great discovery is important but development refining is what qualifies you to sit with the great you don't sit at the seat of greatness simply because you discovered your potentials that is important but alongside the law of value knowing your difference is not alone enough building your difference to a point that is worthy of reward is what we're talking about um someone was over i think he was the head of department uh, media he was over at my place and um you know he was served a very sumptuous very very sumptuous meal and you know i was just watching him serving himself and helping himself adding this adding that adding chicken adding fish adding this and i was watching him and then i told him i said if this were a restaurant how much will you pay and then he looked i i, I was just reminiscing on my teaching tonight listen please help me with this how much is this 20 naira let's say 100 naira let's use a round figure this is 100 naira will you pay 1000 naira for this i'm not talking of free will donation will you go to a shop and pay 1000 why what will you say if i sell this 1000 to you it's too much because you feel that this is valuable but not to that degree is that true if your school fees is 30000 you may not complain even if you complain you may just pay it there is no school that has if you go take your child to a school and they tell you that school is 100 naira will you admit your child there I know you are crying recession but you carry your heart and child except if you just got somebody from the street but you took your child how much is the school fees and you're about bringing out your checkbook and no 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 sir it's 100 naira 100 naira for what for the entire three three um, um what they call them three terms first term second term third time say that's how we are in this school automatically you already know what is going to happen to the destiny of your child There are times that the prices of things are high but we are happy paying for them because we know that there has been development to a level that will commensurately pay you is that true yes competence reject mediocrity write it down i reject mediocrity you have to write it personalize it don't say we reject this is not a corporate thing you must reject it personally there are many believers who are not competent 
apostle i make her pray for my my um my what they call my salon someone comes to your son you burn their hair you charge high you finish late you are frowning heat is killing them there and close to close to the um the television is one bottle of anointing oil there very dirty dusty around dirty place the gutter is smelling there's a bottle of minerals close to that gutter and you say please pay 100 naira for it and the person say what what is your idea of me just because i came to spend three hours to make my hair praise god people have traveled from region to region to go somewhere and be able to buy certain things because they are looking for quality let me tell you not everyone is afraid of quality there are people who have conquered price what they are looking for is quality did you hear what i said yes oh but if i put quality everybody around my area cannot pay for it you don't need everybody one person can equal 200 mediocres one person who likes you pastor david biome was sharing and saying that he noticed that the, those who sold his clothes they will collect measurement of 11 and so 13. he said they, they will never return back to him again but then one they would sew three clothes the same measurement one will look as if you know and then the other one he said what sort of people are you you are not competent and some of them were members of his church he said no i love you but i can't use you then he found somebody who charged twice the price and he looked at the person and he said why are you charging twice the price and the person says sir i know what i can deliver according to him and he says okay i'm impressed let me give you a trial he said when he came back with that clothes david biome said that's it you are the one who will sow my traditionals now one david biome is worth some cities i think i like that kind of business why labor to get two 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 naira from everybody when i can get one million from one loyal person don't allow environment make you compromise on quality because impressions 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 are important you give a negative impression about your shop the day you change people will still think you are like yesterday you now went for a three months tailoring school and now you have become a pro tailor but everybody looks at you and says don't waste your time going to that woman do you know god is my witness i once saw a wedding cloth ejimi wedding a lady's wedding gown i never would believe they sold that thing in nigeria i thought it was maybe you know london school of tailoring or one of these um gucci or versace and all of that and they told me a, a tailor made a tailor in the north here i mean with with a level of precision now those people are not noisemakers you may not see them on facebook but they are the types if you call them they don't even pick your call if you are ready to spend five hundred thousand on a wedding gown get to them in a year they, they sow for 100 people only they are building estates and other people are there saying you say it depends on your level which type if you want for ten thousand i can sow and then a night to the wedding that's when they bring it and it's raining you can't wash it they bring a white wedding gown that is smelly fabric is bad is torn they say you know they, you didn't finish paying yourself you you spoil another person's wedding simply because of incompetence and he said please if you know any other person bring no no nobody does that listen excellence is self-marketing excellence is self-marketing being excellent to one person is the same as attracting 100 people the money you will use to attract 100 people can be saved in creating an excellent outcome everybody say excellence look at me there are many of us right now what you are writing on what you are writing on is a piece of paper that you could not even tear orderly that is a piece of paper is an issue but the discipline to just tear it and create synergy you don't have that patience you just tear everything and you are writing something that will change your destiny you're not excellent 
you see excellence is a culture it starts from your life you don't try to pretend it outside you eat you don't wash the plate you are not excellent you wash the plate you don't throw away the dirty water you are not excellent you use the same soap to bath wash clean mop or the same rag your sponge case for your shoe you are not excellent are we together don't laugh at anybody god is speaking to you you enter to bath like i was teaching school of ministry students some of you bath in one minute you they ask you a question you are answering it while you are bathing you will think you are flushing the toilet you just say Sha! and you are out no you are not excellent sir you are not excellent are we together wearing one boxer for two weeks you are not excellent wearing one torn singlet smelling it to see if it's still usable you are not excellent ironing clothes with sweat on it and seeing it rise and you are, you are not excellent are we together you are laughing ask those who this thing has cost them so much do you know just there are people someone like me i eat emotionally before my mouth touches it presentation matters as much as what it is you don't cook nonsense and say the most important thing is your body no why did god give me eyes are we together now you have a restaurant i carry your spoon somebody took gary with the spoon and you obviously they were washing it in a hurry and you see the trace why should i remain there let's tell ourselves the truth tonight success systems there's oil all around they have to call you madam come and clean this table now you just send one lady who frowns around comes out as if everybody has offended her just pushes the rug across the table <laughs> pours the water on you and goes madam give me rice beans towel and one other part she goes to go and bring swallow no attention to details after 20 or i'm showing us little things no attention to details iron someone's cloth you go and burn the cloth you don't know how much the cloth is and say sir i i decided I, I remember one guy who wanted me to start um doing dry cleaning with him and so he said he wanted to do something i said okay let me try you i gave him a suit he returned it after like one month i don't know what he did on it i said thank you i gave it to somebody and i knew that even him he knew that he had lost that opportunity forever let's stop saying god is not looking down on us i'm showing you how god comes what we cannot receive because we don't understand his systems one day i will cook for the governor who are you with what you are doing now you are not training yourself the governor is not an idiot the government house is not a zoo if you want to cook well you must be competent don't throw anything at anybody are we together now how about babas how about babas how about babas There are people who pay as much as four five thousand just to bob their hair you think they are lavishing money they are not ready to risk their hair are we together you bring out a clipper you don't even know whether it's sharp or not you injure someone all around because you are bobbing don't don't love these are ways that anything can take you to the top if it's excellent it's not just shell it's not just oil and gas it's a determination to be thorough pay attention to details listen to the instructions no assumption you met somebody god is introducing a great businessman to you about to take a risk with you he says call me by 2 p.m tomorrow it's by 1 30 you sleep are you a serious person you get up and start ringing his phone by four i say no you have to pray apostle this guy is not picking my my call why should he pick your call maybe that guy is in church for evening service maybe he's a deacon you are ringing by seven 
you are ringing his number he told you call me by two someone tells you i want to give you a job i want to help you come by two you stroll carelessly by 2 30 and say uncle just to let you know i'm around you know you won't get the job because some jobs are the, the lives of people are dependent on it excellence you have one shoe you polish it you comb your hair well don't dress around like a thief going to the house of god you look smart say i'm not i'm not a man of god it doesn't mean you should be like that you are smart it's not about having money excellence your notebooks you bind them well if they are torn you fix them you fix your bible are we together now your environment is neat very neat we come into your kitchen we see it neat we come into your toilet we see it neat we come into the living room we see it neat that's excellence don't say we were not trained that way that's why god is bringing you koinonia is a school and you are learning are we together is god helping us the law of competence how to be competent quickly now that i've challenged your mediocrity how do i become competent number one you must have a reference you cannot be excellent and competent when there is no reference a reference means an individual that reflects your aspiration there must be someone even if you plan to surpass that level there must be a reference oh i want to become a great worship minister i have a reference like don moen now that gives you a standard to start climbing the ladder when you become like don moen you now earn the right to go higher but not when you are down I want to be great like who i'm unique oh yes you are unique but you need a reference the bible said ask for the ancient parts that means someone walked in it before you are you hearing what i'm saying now you must have a reference look at me hold on mike if you do not have a reference for ministry for business you want to become a great man of god like who who represents a model because that's the life you are going to understudy that's going to be your case study i want to become a business mogul like who you just mentioned one hilarious name how many videos of that person do you have have you ever gone for a seminar organized by that person no competence and excellence is based on a reference i always challenge every department in this ministry to have a modern ministry whose whose um whose who reflect their aspiration so every department has a reference that they can look up to for inspiration references are important because we draw inspiration from them If your reference is small your outcomes will be small you see when your references are people of mediocrity you will hit it too fast even when you don't do much and so you will not aspire to rise number two how to be competent submit yourself to mentorship now that you have references i told you last week that mentorship and training is the only way to be successful trust me when i say this mentorship is not listening to a man mentorship is submitting yourself to build the character the traits the habits the principles and the secrets of a man submitting yourself to build the character the traits the habits the principles the secrets i take it again the character the traits the habits the principles the secrets of a man that's what you do when you are when you are receiving mentorship it's not just to go and package yourself for nothing no you sit down why is this person getting these results what is he doing that i'm not doing 
why does Benny Hinn stand on stage and 40 people rise up on the wheelchair and he has not started praying is it that God is unfair to me God you called me to have the healing anointing but what is it about what's the difference between me and Benny Hinn then you study his prayer life you may never have that close access to him so you take advantage of his materials you know a lot of people call me and say sir I want you to mentor me can I be calling you anytime I say no he says, sir, so how do you mentor me? I said, that's why I'm teaching. I'm teaching all the time. There's Koinonia Radio. Our teachings are free. Listen, they say I have it. I say, that's why you will never learn. Mentorship is not listening to a radio program or a TV program. I've shared with a school of ministry students. There are times it takes me three days to watch a one-hour video. Three days to watch a one-hour video. Because almost every two, two minutes I'm stopping. This man said this. I have to listen that's mentorship you submit yourself to read between the lines ah he just said the power of god will touch somebody outside and somebody was shouting how did he know was that the word of knowledge man this guy is powerful that's excitement that's not mentorship there are too many excited people who just see results and don't know the secrets i was told i don't know if it's true or not but i was told one great man of god bishop um Abioye, that one time one man said he wanted to you know find out the secret of his prayer life and he said fine let's pray and that they prayed after a long time the guy was yawning he wanted to sleep and then bishop abio told him okay we've given thanks now let's pray and the guy was almost dying <laughs> if that story is true that guy is not wise what do you think the anointing is you think the anointing is a charm even a charm go and ask a herbalist the price for a charm that can throw a man down not give him miracles just push a man against gravity the secret of great men is in their stories pay attention when a great man is giving you examples pay attention when a great man is giving you stories they are trying to bring a principle many people laugh at the stories parables and mysteries enshrined in stories you can see the stories and laugh and be raptured by the humor of the communication and miss out on the meaning of it I'm not against laughing be happy but you must be able to see when others are looking are we together submit yourself to mentorship number three understand believe and live by the principles learned how to be competent one you must have a reference to submit yourself to mentorship three understand believe and live by the principles learned it's not enough to just say i know he told me this understand what you are being taught believe what you are being taught let me tell you something i have discovered something with the body of christ many people who supposedly submit themselves to mentorship don't believe half of what they are being told when you don't believe a man don't ever listen to him for mentorship because you'll be wasting your time you have a right to vet a man and do you believe this don't sit down and you are not complete you are not producing any result and you are there and someone is teaching on the anointing i say no i don't just because he made a mistake with one greek word he said no i have the the modern lexicon or god who, who did you get out of a wheelchair whose eye opened that's the summary of this thing we are talking about whose eye opened whose life changed you prophesied on somebody everything was wrong sit down sit down don't just say the person does not have faith you are you are, you are, you are messing up if it's not working it's not working sit down when i see people who communicate dimensions that are not at work in my life even if i don't exactly understand what they are saying i sit down and try to discern the spirit of what they are saying because sometimes it may be that they are not able to communicate maybe a businessman a smart businessman who is let's say um he's somebody who is not very he just used street sense but in that street sense he kept acquiring principles now he may be sharing business secrets he may not intelligently articulate it like someone who went to harvard business school will but you can discern the spirit of his communication not to sit down and say kai this carpenter now wow but he's the number one carpenter do you know why rich people are coming to him maybe the man every 
two two months he will package a seed and squeeze it and take it to his reverend that may be his edge while you are listening to him one day in passing he will reveal a secret and say that's my pastor let me tell you something see that man that man is powerful say talk to me say i used to the only thing i used to make before was coughing and then one day he called me prophesied to me now i make bed i even have a timber shed now he did not say it intelligently but you have picked a principle years ago i was in abuja and i took a cab when i took a cab we we're discussing with the driver because sometimes i crack jokes with them say ah oh guy you poor enjoying they say ah my chama and abba i'm not enjoying and then he, we're talking about money and then later the man said oh god you know say this money eh that the thing has a spirit and then i started listening to him he said do you know that he tried to build a house in abuja he tried and tried could not build but he said he saved and took the money out of abuja and in four months he built i discerned something that guy was saying he was communicating a deep mystery but because of his the barrier in communication are we together now listen if you don't have results in your life you are not a colleague to the person who has results sit down humble yourself believe learn if you don't believe it will not work for you you don't only believe the principle you must believe the communicator are we together now yes. a woman didn't go to school she's taking care of 10 of her children and you are there i am a lawyer i'm a barrister and the madam is saying let me tell you this i flogged my child from age one to seven when my child was in my womb i was anointing my womb with oil now he's not saying you should repeat the anointing discern the mystery of what she was saying she may now tell you that i took one night vigil for all my children before they were born you are now learning secrets you apply the same thing and change any dull head in your life to an intelligent child no matter what the limitations are listen one of the greatest ways of receiving mentorship is observation don't wait for a great man to tell you everything there are people who look and say ah, is this all there are people who have never seen but observe you observe when the power of god is about to come how does he behave observation observation jesus was speaking to them and saying, you can look at the cloud and through observation know that it is rainy season you can learn a lot through observation every time you enter the presence of a great man be observant you see him keeping laws oh somebody disappoints him and he doesn't quarrel the person in public he says okay that's all right we'll go and see oh oh god the poor man now wants to kneel down and says all right let's go you are learning you are the one who quarrels your house help in front of everybody and before you know it they start calling the house help the name you are calling you insult your wife in front of everybody don't mind this useless woman very soon your friend will say that's why he's calling you a useless woman because you are making men reflect what you are communicating principles say i receive grace to be observant say it again i receive grace to be observant and then number four the fourth way to be competent remain connected never disconnect from those who lift you up it's foolishness a time may come in your life you feel you don't need them again in terms of the dynamics of what they are teaching you but that's when great men fall no matter how tall a skyscraper is it remains for as long as he's still connected to the ground there's no skyscraper that says i am i am 500 meters into the air i can disconnect no sir are we together yes are you learning let me give us two more laws and then we'll be done is god helping us <laughs> you know look at this let me tell you this if you're a businessman listen twice to what i'm teaching you and everybody's in business i hope you know business is simply solving a problem for an agreed reward it's not wearing suits and sitting in business class 
business is solving a problem for an agreed reward simple most men think men of god don't know anything about business you know when they look at men of god they just feel we are just daft people you are praying and fasting you don't know anything see see still this pride we are talking about what do you think managing people is what do you think managing resources are what do you think multiplying them is are we together now the law of the mind number what number four am i right five thank you number one is i'm the one teaching listen number one is the law of relationships am i right number two the law of value number three the law of competence and excellence oh that's true how to be competent is part of it number four the law of the mind jesus the law of the mind proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 is god helping us as i teach you you should be seeing the loopholes what laws you are not keeping that is deactivating the systems of success in your life 23 verse 7 proverbs for as he thinketh in his heart it's interchange with the word mind so is he not so he will be as you are thinking you already are the bible creates your um references your physical reality to what is happening in your mind the bible says in proverbs 4 23 guard your heart proverbs 4 23 guard your heart with all diligence it says for from out of it are the issues of life guard it it is a guard your head it is a guard your legs guard your heart you don't cover yourself the worst is you catch cold and mosquitoes can disturb you but you don't protect your mind you will fail in life listen being filled with the holy spirit does not negate the need to transform and build your mind the law of the mind what does it state as it is in your mind so it will be in your life as it is in your mind so it will be in your life trust me your physical reality is a messless reflection of the summation of your understanding your thought patterns as it is in your mind so it will be in your life A great mentor says you become what you think about how true you become what you think about your life is a reflection of your most dominant thoughts your life is a reflection the quality of your life today is a reflection of your understanding about God about life the quality of your life today is a reflection of your paradigms are we getting blessed the mind is a mystery that i want all of us we've had several teachings here on the mind but it's important for you to understand the mind my life changed this law alone changed me like day and night the law of the mind that my the quality of my life today is a reflection of my mind your mind is a miracle your mind is a gold mine it literally is literally is literally is write this down your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden full stop write it down your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden it will grow any seed planted and watered it will grow any seed that is planted and watered in agric science they teach that there are several kinds of soils i don't know if they've discovered others but as far as i remember they taught loamy soil clay soil what other one sandy soil and every other auxiliary one that comes as a combination of them your mind is in is a perfect garden 
sustaining the ability to grow any seed that is planted and watered no matter what is planted in your mind if it lands on that soil and you water it and i'll tell you how to water it it must grow unfortunately it does not grow in your mind it grows in your life you plant it in your mind it grows in your life look at your life the summation of everything in your life your finances your peace your understanding your excellence your relationships everything in your life is a sum total of your paradigm it's an uncomfortable truth many people will not want to admit but it's true apostle nothing is working no friends in my life no favor in my life there is an inaccurate understanding or a poor understanding you are sustaining listen your ignorance is a seed you can plant it in your mind and it will bring you a bumper harvest let me tell you what ignorance produces pain frustration disappointment these are all harvests of the seed of ignorance it's rainy season all the time in your mind your mind has no dry season it's rainy season all the time capacity to produce anything there's no barrenness with the mind there's only wrong seeds planted in the mind and i'm standing here only because you made you made a way made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way and we're standing here only because you one more time. made you a way you made a way made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over that can happen to you outside of salvation is not the healing of your body listen carefully there are people with no legs who are changing the world there are people with no eyes who are changing the world but there is nobody with an unfruitful mind who can change the world the worst thing that can happen to a man is not his eyes missing not the legs not the mouth there is a scientist i don't know his name who had a a disease that literally crippled him yet he's one of the smartest scientists in the world nothing else in your life is worth crying for till you lose your mind the worst sickness in life is madness not blindness not blindness madness if I give you one billion and I make you mad have I blessed you please talk to me yes there are people who have built empires in fact there's a book like that empires of the mind and it's worth reading very powerful book you have to learn and understand this mystery called the mind many believers are not interested like some of you probably are as i'm talking now you're like, oh mind bring another thing now look you will never be great i'm sharing you with you the principles that i have lived by you have seen the anointing and the grace of god upon my life i'm showing you the other sides to these success systems because many people just think oh these people are just privileged no sir these are systems they make your life and your outcome predictable you never truly rise above your mindset you never truly rise underline the word truly you never truly rise above your mindset you may jump above it for a while but i assure you 
you will never truly rise your life will only rise to match the level of your mindset no matter how you manipulate it your mindset is what shows the quality of your life I wrote down something here I want you to listen to I don't know if you can have the speed to write it but listen first if you attempt to change your life without changing your mind your mindset will compel behaviors that will force your life to return back and reflect the level of your mind you know how you pull a rubber ring you can pull it and it becomes elastic and you think it will remain like that the moment you push it what happens it returns back that's how many people are if you attempt to change your life change your shoe <laughs> change your suit change your hair change watch change cars and all these mundane things that we use around to prove that you are successful you attempt to change them first without changing your mind your mind will cause them to disappear until your life returns back to the level of your mind see i have seen this thing work too many times have you i've given this example here i believe have you seen someone that you used a dress for one year and people would think you just sold it because the dress is reflecting the quality of your mindset that maintenance culture of excellence reflected on the dress carry it as a gift and give a tongue-talking careless believer who is not prepared to work on their minds give them two weeks you know what you see the shirt will reflect their mind they won't iron it they won't wash it the color will change they won't care it will tear they won't sew it later on you will check and see that they now use it to wash a car two months hollandis that you spend money to buy you decided to sew it in two months they are using it to wash motorcycle that's the mindset so that person's mindset changed that fabric to come back to the level in my life i've had the privilege by the grace of god to bless people financially usually they come and they tell you sir i have an idea i have this if you only give me this money i will never return back and i look at them and i say what is your idea of success because you think all you need to be great and i'm correcting many of us here right now because there are people about to make that mistake you think all you need is hundred thousand two hundred thousand if it left you it is not your hand that took it away it's your mind that took it away so you must correct something in your mind first before having it back are we together now the most difficult person to help is the man who is resistant to positive mental transformation the most difficult person to help the most difficult person to help is the man who is resistant to positive mental transformation the moment you find a man who is resistant to change in terms of mindset you have found a man who has defined himself as being hopeless I have seen great people rise and didn't pay attention to rise first in the mind I've seen people inherit money I've seen people win lottery millions of dollars and their mindsets created behavioral patterns that drove everything away from them having physical things without a transformed mind is like having a jeep without knowing how to drive it's not if you will have accident it's when are we together now you can manage to navigate your way driving nonsense and arrive safely and then one day you decide to pack passengers and travel that's the day you die you see that and you can die the death of a fool listen packaging without mental upgrade will lead to frustration write it nigerians packaging without mental upgrade will lead to i was almost saying like lead to nigeria will lead to frustration packaging you know what we call packaging paying attention to the physical form now it is important appearance is important appearance is the seed 
for acceptance so don't don't ignore appearance is important because it is the seed for acceptance joseph had to shave his beard to stand before pharaoh so acceptance is the seed i mean appearance is the seed for acceptance however packaging having physical things around you now listen many of us young people have a very big there's a big mistake we're making everybody wants to buy a car everybody wants to buy a shoe oh that great man is wearing Versace is wearing Gucci wearing Louis Vuitton and me too I want to get all these designers I want to and then you now try and save and save and beg and steal and raise money and then buy the shoe buy the hair buy everything so physically you look let me tell you something a great man and a great name are not the same if your name is greater than you you are in trouble you must rise to get to the level of your name i will make your name great does not mean you are great it's, it's a disappointing thing for your name to be greater than you god makes your name great as an act of mercy so that you can quickly catch up are we blessed the law of the mind there's too much packaging packaging i know people who years ago as students were behaving like bankers a student will buy a suit of forty thousand. a student will not cook no 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 i don't have that time i don't uh, i don't like okra soup do you have that option no whoever pays creates the rules you cannot somebody cannot pay and you say i don't like okra there are people who try to live a life you have not built your mind there are so many people holding briefcases today arrogant people you see them they move around wearing suits loitering our streets you ask them what do we do say it depends on which which company i have five companies uh, i'm the ceo of this what do you do well we are into logistics what do you mean logistics logistics is like saying i'm studying science what do you do I'm into real real estate what do you know about real estate well my uncle gave me one land to sell you are not into real estate are we together now i am this i'm into that i'm i'm, I'm one of in fact by the grace of god it's just that i don't want to talk too loud i'm one of the top fashion people in this this town who knows you who has patronized you we make too much noise whereas our results cannot match it it is better for people to have a low expectation over you and then your results shock them than to make so much noise i can cook for one thousand people just give me this money i know what i'm saying is it cooking what is there in cooking then the food is smelling smoke all around burnt the meat burnt the food burnt everything packaging is good but have content have content build your mind buy the truth buy books buy materials i can spend the whole night teaching on the mind focus on changing your mind brothers and sisters and i promise you your life will change don't don't get into this pressure of living a fake life if all you have today is gary take it with honor use your 2000 naira buy a bible buy a book read pay for seminars you are buying the truth you are investing your destiny yes i know you have one trouser the trouser is torn around sew it with honor let them laugh at you a day will come you will own a clothing line all these things somebody just finishes a graduate you are moving around when you are going somewhere you go and change ten thousand naira and um, you have twenty thousand savings you change twenty thousand to five hundred naira new note and you just go and dash and say well this is part of what god has done now you take look at the fake life social media has helped us to live very fake lives now there are positive aspects of it people snap near cars that are not their own they stand near a plane and snap 
they do all kinds so you don't even know it's better for you to know where you are so that you can rise there is a way you live a life that is too fake you don't even know that is fake again are we together you go to a house that is not near your house stand in front of the gate just put one leg and snap and then you go around now let me tell you what you, every time you create expectations that are higher than your capacity what you do is that you cause men to expect more from you are we together yes packaging without mental upgrade will always lead to frustration there are many pastors i love them i love the body of christ but you see a lot of people this guy will wear suit you think if you match the ground every wheelchair will stand up wear the suit wear tie wear all kinds of things pocket square all kinds of things bible ipad another book one protocol one for whoever it is that is standing by the side and you hold the mic one scripture you can quote one prayer you can pray man of god i don't know what to do about my finances as well god will attend to your needs look at the answer he's giving no knowledge of the principles of the kingdom yet you are the first to spend all your money so every you go to a meeting like this you come for koinonia stand outside and snap and use it to publicize your church you say come there is an overflowing abundance of people there are four members in your church it's not a thing to laugh at god is going to lift you you see people live all kinds of fake lives you don't know what is true and what is not true you are selling rappers it's all right but you go somewhere to one big boutique and snap yourself and say me in one of my shops you are lying it is the truth that sets free brothers and sisters not everybody dances to a fake life there are people who can see you and say i know you are starting but i'm taking the risk to lift you and support you are we together yes say i receive grace to work on my mind first ladies some of you spend all kinds of hilarious amount on hair on rings on clothes on hands you are creating an impression are you working no well how much is your salary per month it just comes as as a favor opens up doors for me anyhow so why are you living like that a restaurant that everybody there is a ceo you too you enter there number one you have not grown to that level so you don't even know that they don't call people the see with every lifting life teaches you the protocol of that realm when you force yourself into that realm you don't know the protocol of that realm if you have truly gotten to that level let me tell you the justice system of god is such that you will learn the day you can get to a restaurant where it's a buffet you will already know the precepts of that level be careful let me speak to some of us here who are leaders business leaders ministry people be careful as you attempt to lift people don't be so sympathetic about people that you lift them beyond their current level of dealing with god in a bid to help them you will expose them to dimensions they are not prepared for and it will destroy them sometimes you see people crying somebody just comes to you and says ah, i have a crusade eh? money is not coming say really or oh, yeah bring your account two million god is trying to teach him how to trust you destroy that lecture you gave the guy two million do you know what he's going to say he will arrow he was begging you crying but he will arrogantly stand before his members and say if you have ever doubted that there's oil on my head go and check my bank account now that guy has not learned anything most people will use your help to prove that they had faith they didn't know you helped them me i don't pray i don't pray things just happen in my life i'm, I'm like that i mean all this i don't waste my time praying because you somebody's you have been reaping somebody's seed the day your farm will be open you will see that uh, what they call that thing shifting cultivation that you have to allow a farm for it because you have allowed it bush fallow what they call all those agri terminologies you have to sit down for years tilling the ground you left for a long time corporate success is good for the organization but dangerous for individuals 
because you won't know who is really producing the result see the, let, let me let me encourage you everyone especially the workers in this ministry we share our success now i've taught in this ministry the principles of shared dominion if somebody says today apostle you are very anointed we share it i'm not anointed alone there were people who made that possible however be careful lest you hide in the midst of crowd to say we are moving forward are you moving forward that's the danger with things like group work 10 people can do an assignment only two are serious the remaining two will sleep all of them will get nine over ten and the other person will come and say kai god is faithful you are not smart you are not learning in the office they give assignments and they come and give everybody bonuses and you are rejoicing yet you are not growing enjoy corporate success but vet yourself to make sure you are an active contributor that your input is in that equation of success how is the mind renewed quickly if this is what we can take we will just stop here how is the mind renewed we need to learn how to transform the mind number one a recognition transformation starts with a recognition that your old ideas cannot take you to your destiny transformation of the mind starts with a recognition that your old ideas the ideas that are currently resident within your mind are not sufficient to take you to the place of destiny that's the first key a recognition that something i know now is limiting me or something i do not know is limiting me that's the first step whoever can recognize that that is my place of destiny but as it is where i am now cannot take me there leads us to point number two the second key to the renewal of the mind is access to new ideas access to revelation access to useful information You can't think the way you are thinking now and rise as a pastor as a businessman as a career person as a student as a family man as a wife as a mother as a child no your thought process thus far is what brought you where you are so you have to think i look at my life today and i look at it maybe five six seven eight years i look at the things i knew and i'm surprised that i could even rise with that level of knowledge because compared to what i know now i was in total ignorance i probably would have argued then but truly speaking i would say i was in total ignorance understanding the systems of god now i'm in shock that's why i glorify god because i see his mercy all the way there is something you can know that will take your church to the next level there is something koinonia can know now that can open us to a new season see leaders learn this you are a pastor businessman leader whatever you are listening to me your ministry or organization will rise and stop at the level of thinking of the leader are we together it is it is it is a very sincere statement you are a ceo of a group that group will only rise to match your level of understanding and stop there because you are the chief legislator of that organization if i stop growing as a person spiritually intellectually otherwise koinonia will rise to the level of my understanding and stop there we will only be recycling knowledge so whilst god is granting me grace to feed you with truth i myself am a student of higher mantles greater graces uncommon leadership and i mean it uncommon leadership you now sometimes when i sit down and read these books or watch these people i sit down and i try to say my god what constructed their understanding to be this flawless access to new ideas number three repetition of the ideas in your mind until conviction is established the third way to renew your mind is not just to have access to ideas but those ideas must be repeated 
until conviction is established faith comes by hearing and hearing that you heard it once does not mean you have built conviction there are messages i've listened to more than 1500 times one message god is my witness and i line up the goal is not just to hear i have understood the principle i wish we had time i would have taught you how the mind works right generally speaking there are two dimensions to the mind there is what we call the conscious mind and what we call the subconscious mind the conscious part of the mind is the area that connects with your senses your physical senses that's where you do your thinking that's where you do your reasoning that's where you do your analysis unfortunately that's not where your behavior comes from that's not where your convictions come from that's where your intention comes from the conscious part of your mind then there is the subconscious part of your mind that's the seat of conviction whatever enters your subconscious mind must manifest in your life so the bible says in genesis chapter 11 right when you read from verse 5 and 6 the bible says god came down nimrod the son of cush gathered the people and said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens let us make a name for ourselves and then the bible says that god said in verse 5 can you give it to us please genesis 11 and verse 5 genesis 11 and verse 5 the bible says that god said there were, he came down to see and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded hold on they had not started building they were mobilizing themselves but the bible says god came down to see the city that has already been built once you build it in your mind you build it in your life so says god himself verse 6 and the lord said behold the people is one and they all have one language and this they begin to do listen and now nothing everybody say nothing who is talking here god nothing will be restrained from them not which they intended which they imagined to do it first happens in your mind i saw these days years ago the mental level i am now the physical reality is not yet the reflection tomorrow will tell you my thought process what you are we are enjoying today was yesterday's thinking are you hearing what i'm saying now your family is a reflection of the thinking of your father and mother it's a reflection of the ideas your life now is a reflection of your ideas listen the subconscious mind there's something very powerful about it the subconscious mind does not know the difference between reality and imagination wow it cannot distinguish between what is imagined and what is real in the world of your subconscious mind whether you are looking at this or imagining it it interprets it as real that's why the bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or because your imagination is a request your imagination is a request you are crying out to your destiny to come so the bible says philippians chapter 4 please give us verse 8 philippians chapter 4 verse 8 <sighs> thank you jesus finally brethren in light of the fact that your destiny is a sum total of your thought pattern he said whatsoever things are what true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise what's the assignment don't just pray think on these things think on these things think on these things think on these things brothers and sisters i think on many things when i look at you i think of how you will be not how you are now no that's why there's nobody i look at and conclude over no no matter how you are when i look at you my eyes are seeing your today but my spirit my mind has captured your tomorrow i look at my life today 
and I've already seen when the nations will come and worship. Ah. Our hearts, our prayer is to see the nations worship. Our desire and our prayer is to sing your praise from the ends of the earth that we one mighty voice every tribe and tongue rejoices our hearts and our desires to see the nations worship no leader enters a future he cannot see son of man what seest thou businessman what seest thou my brother my sister tonight what do you see I see pain in my family I see divorce I see the fact that I've been delayed be careful you are programming your mind to reproduce that hallelujah are we together pray in one minute pray in one minute and say lord change my vision i have allowed life to give me wrong perceptions and i'm programming my life wrongly pray pray will soon stop but i want you to get this law it's important what you see your perception he looked at a weak man Gideon and he said I see a mighty man of failure brothers and sisters since I was nothing and I didn't have anything I saw a great destiny that's what I see I know what I see in the glory and the power I see miracles, that's my life. I'm a sign and wonder. It's in the glory and the power. I see miracles, signs and wonders. What I believe Let me tell you something Do you know years ago Years ago I would go to our boys quarters in the night alone i never knew my mother was watching me i would get a stick and i was seeing these days i was preaching i would stand i would just go imaginary in the air and say in the name of jesus rise up from the wheelchair that's what i was doing and i would feel the anointing because you see your the holy spirit works through your mind i told you your mind doesn't care whether it's imagination or not job said the thing i feared most came upon me i thought about it accident accident until a car killed me all i see is a great destiny that's what i see for myself all i see is koinonia rising from glory to glory i never see bomb blast i never see trouble i see myself as a leader over men of influence i have never seen impossibility in my life and i'm not just i'm not joking i said this when i could not buy a shoe it's in the glory and the power I see miracles signs and wonders I mean the glory and the power I'm a living miracle and a sign and wonder Stop looking 
down on yourself many of these said why do the heathens rage and the people imagine a vain thing that's why they execute it you imagine a vain thing you imagine failure i am nothing i graduated with third class can anything good come out of nazareth i can't speak well i am too old oh come on now oh come on now we are talking about the god of heaven the one who can change people listen listen someone asked me one day and said apostle god has blessed you so much with gifted people how do you get them and i told him i see them i see a service conducted by music ministers who as individuals are international figures you have been allowing the devil plant nonsense in your mind there are ladies here whereas there is esther in you vashti is calling you your destiny is calling you but your yesterday is pulling you back remember you failed you failed jam five times what is the definition of a failure then you submit to it the moment you submit to it you destroy yourself listen every great man is a man who changed his mind literally right from the time i was having bread bread i will i will cut the bread and put granite in the middle I knew that a day will come I will feed nations. Ask Ejimi. We had a song. Ask and I'll give the nations to you. Oh Lord. That was our song. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will sing. Your light as it rises on earth. Yeah. Ask and I'll give the right from the time before God gave me access to the heart of kings I saw myself I knew that there was an anointing every apostle was connected to kings I found it from scripture and I said no there is a mantle upon my life there are people here from our first crusades we will go and greet kings go and greet the kings in the land it was a seed listen tomorrow will never appear till you call it you will call it your mind is a fruitful part of your destiny the holy spirit is crippled if your mind says yes no demon can say no believe me hallelujah listen the lord gave me a very great testimony i think it was the day before yesterday or yesterday something happened and um it's something i had seen in my spirit i'd seen in my mind and i would not see it physically and then the lord gave me a very big miracle when it manifested and i looked at it it was exactly what i had seen in the spirit and i said this god believe him did you hear what i said i'm going to teach you the law of faith i thought we would have more time there are many laws to teach you brothers and sisters when you activate these things by next week when we are done i'm going to spend the night before next week praying all the oils that will be used i will lie down and pray on it when we are done that oil as it comes on your head you will activate systems my my listen my brother my sister it will shock you this life you see this life you see is a living miracle it's a product of understanding this is what dominion is it's not guesswork I saw myself walking in the anointing I saw it I saw shadows killing the sick I saw it it's not some vain nonsense imagination I believe it the only audience in my vision yet I pulled it down 
and it will cause nations to see it you are the first to live in your future and then i speak it lord it will happen i will stand before kings they will come gentiles i saw a ministry that was zero zero debt zero debt owing no man nothing as a ministry dead or alive i saw it where did the money come from your mind there is nobody giving any guarantee anywhere there are people frowning my uncle didn't give me ten there are nobody's uncle promises him anything leave all those dependence careless dependence everything comes from above it comes through men not from men from god through men to you men are not your source they are channels it comes from god we are going to pray is someone angry are you seeing how you have authorized i've only taught you four laws some of you have missed it in relationships some of you have missed it your gift is not speaking some of you mediocrity just these four laws alone are enough to open your destiny see god instructed me to teach you this series because god wants to roll away shame shame he has taken all the pain you've taken all lamentation you've taken all disappointments you've taken all my sorrow you have taken all my sadness you've taken all limitations Taking all the pain, you've taken all the shame. You have been very yours. The highest praise to the King. what some of your family members would have been had they known these laws they destroyed relationships and it has grounded them some of them the last time they worked was 1997 no door open till today sincere well-meaning believers but they have not understood the systems of the kingdom nobody is born with understanding you buy the truth i want you to lift your voice and prophesy i found my way i found my way I found my way. I found my way out of misery.
my way. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Lord, I begin to live my life from the standpoint of these laws. I engage them. I receive grace. Lift your voice and pray. Grace. Grace to engage these laws. Grace to engage these laws. Yes, Lord. You are taking me from glory to glory. Are you not the Lord of all flesh? You are not a man that you should lie. Not the son of man that you should bear. Hallelujah. You know that song, right? That Nathaniel Bassi song. Just sing it once. I want us to sing it. Let the devil know that we're singers. Let's just pray for two minutes. I want you to forget where you are now. Forget what you cannot eat now. I want you to see a bright future. Draw from that future and start prophesying. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. Say back and forth from the heaven higher. No devil stops me. In the name of Jesus. The realm of the anointing. I'm coming to you. That realm of add one last prayer our time is gone listen we are going to pray there is a spirit that can destroy all these things you have had it's called the spirit of fear apostle will it work are you joking the laws that founded the universe these are not scientific laws they were not invented no the very laws listen God told Job in chapter 38 verse 33 
it says knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth we are not talking about what we are guessing these are not cunningly devised fables these are the secrets the secrets age-long secrets i like you right now to challenge the spirit of fear call it by name and drive it from your life i open the door and i ask you out of my life out of my life god has not given me the spirit of fear that goal is achievable that dimension of anointing is accessible that dimension of ministry that dimension of Jesus I cast away the spirit of fear now I cast it now I'm seeing it that's why I'm praying I cast away the spirit of fear now I cast you by the God of heaven I cast away the spirit of fear now I decree and declare impartation of confidence may it come upon you now the Bible says to cast not away your confidence for it has a great recompense of reward. I decree and declare that everything that attempts to make you feel you will end up like those that you have seen fall. I challenge that voice now. I challenge that voice now. Right now in the name of Jesus, I release fresh dreams. I release fresh visions fresh expectations where you have watered down God's expectation because of fear I lift it back to God's standard in the name of Jesus Christ and I decree and declare that as you apply we have done four there are many more but these four I release grace upon them and I anoint these laws to work for you I anoint these laws to work for you they will work like magic for you in the name of Jesus beginning from tonight not tomorrow begin to command testimonies from this law open doors from this law restorations from this law breakthroughs from this law anybody that will make you doubt this laws may God take them far from you There is somebody here next week friday is with tears he will stand and testify here i'm speaking to you by the spirit this is not for everybody but there is somebody what will happen from tomorrow till next week friday i say it by the spirit of god is with your tears you will stand here testifying in the name of the lord jesus christ listen don't ever call anything impossible you are not dealing with an intelligent man you are dealing with god if you don't fear man fear god are we together to ask whether the laws will work is to mock god it is sin 
it is sin it's not only bad it is sin you hear what i'm saying there is no amount of money you need that you'll be getting it for the first time there is no amount of breakthrough you are looking for no not for your small shop to doubt god not for your cgpa not for your graduation take away the fears and focus and say lord i trust you let god be true and all men liars he said god is not a man that he should lie not the son of man that he should repent i say it again every hanging prophecy that is over your life that the devil is trying to make it look like it will not come to pass i release an anointing now i command that it comes to pass now let it come to pass i release the grace for performance the grace for performance the grace for performance i command it to come to pass the grace for performance thank you jesus lord we give you praise for tonight we honor you because you are building us we will experience strange dimensions of triumph in the name of jesus you're standing here tonight and you're saying man of god i do not have a relationship with jesus i will not tell lies i see the move of the spirit in this place and i need jesus please keep standing everyone our time is gone we're rounding up i need jesus or you are saying man of god as i heard you speak i knew that i was lacking in my relationship with the lord jesus christ i have come here tonight with my heart open i've been lying to myself but tonight i'm ready to tell the truth overflow one overflow two overflow three online inside wherever you are our time is gone i want to count one to three run like there's fire on the mountain don't wait for anyone make your way out quickly make your way out quickly are there people coming clear the way for them somebody has got to be convicted of the spirit young old make your way quickly there are people coming outside please clear the way for them ushers help them overflow one two three if you are coming run 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 young and old run quickly please keep coming god bless you our time is gone but we must give you an opportunity for a fresh start tonight man of god i want to rededicate my life i'm tired of living my life my own way make your way to the front no matter the limitations god is giving you a new beginning are you coming don't let your friends stop you run join them quickly hallelujah if you're joining them quickly just join them and then we'll pray those in front i honor you thank you so much lift your right hand and say this after me convincingly truthfully you're not reciting a poem say lord jesus i love you i believe in you tonight i hand over my life to you be my lord be my savior i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that i'm a child of god from now and forever keep your hands lifted father receive these ones i pray that this will begin the you start the beginning of a new life i command every spirit that is not of god to leave you and i decree and declare that beginning from today the life of god finds expression in you i cause everything that does not belong to christ i release you to serve the lord i declare that your sins are forgiven and the lord gives you a new beginning in jesus name i pray thank you so much and congratulations please follow the gentleman waving his hands all of you just follow him they'll have your details very very quickly hallelujah just two announcements for tonight the first announcement aside from honorable and his wife if this is your first time worshiping with us here at koinonia overflow one two three i know there are a number of people please you will need to run aside from those coming out wherever you are come i want to bless you i want to speak over your life koinonia honor them those connecting with us for the first time online we love you we bless you are you coming quickly please dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny.
Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos Kata Branda Kata Pakotos Koto Prekateka Nekata The phase of development Lord grant me the discipline 